Okay, this should be a fun one. Got a longtime friend in the building. Watched this man before he blew. Seen him rise to the top of the charts. Become an international celebrity. And, and, and now this man is doing his thing, looking like fine wine. I tell, hold on, before I get into it, I gotta move down to Atlanta because there's something in that water. Y'all, y'all Asian like fine wine. Yeah. Please welcome to Vlad TV, Young Jock. Jock, what up? <laughs> Prayers, what it do? And thank you, Father. How you kid? The flattering compliments, my good friend. No, yeah, well deserved, brother. Well deserved. Uh, yo, Jock, we got a lot to get into. So I, I want to take it back. I like to start these interviews at the beginning and then bring them up. I know um, it's some things we got to cover, but let's go back to the beginning. So you originally from Atlanta. Yeah. What was it like growing up for you? Because I know you to be one way, but, you know, who looks could be deceiving. I mean, was you a kid that was fun loving? Yeah, I was always in the shit. You know what I'm saying? I was one of those kids who... I was very smart, so I was the kid to get finished with my work first in, in, in class. So on one side of things, I had my shit together. But because I was had that bubbly personality, I was always in with the other crowd too, the ones who mm -hmm. wasn't doing their work. So I was I was with the, the studious kids and I was with the class clowns, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of played both sides of it. Yeah, because the, the jock I know, and that's one thing I always credit to you, and we're going to get to this, your work ethic has always been top notch. Um, you're a person who from day one was willing to put in the work to get what you want. Right. So, you know, I'm just thinking like jock the kid. It don't surprise me that you was doing well in school and playing both sides of the fence. Um. So it, 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 as you were growing up, I'm assuming you were a relatively good kid. It ain't necessarily you got I was, one of them yeah, stories I, I, where... I was a mischievous kid, you know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. wasn't bad. I wasn't stealing cars. I wasn't robbing. I wasn't breaking into people's houses. But I was getting in fights. I was doing shit that get my ass whooped, getting suspended from school. But I still had a certain level of uh, integrity, you know, even as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I, I was the kid that... You know, I might be running with a look. I might be with somebody, and the neighbor is like, she frowning at him. But hey, Jock, how you doing? How you doing, Miss Karen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you doing, Miss Pam? You know what I mean? So it was kind of like they, they even in school, the, the teachers would be like, "Yo, how you, how are you this smart and you hang with the knuckleheads? Like, what are you doing?" It's like, "Yo, I, I can't help that I relate to these cats." But I also relate to the kids in here who at the top of the class too. You know what I'm saying? I was a good grade kind of kid, but I also was a principal office, go see the counselor type of kid too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was your parents like? What was your um, relationship like with your parents? It's interesting, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my mama really ain't take no shit, but I was a boy. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it was always a challenge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dealing with me. My dad, he ain't take no shit, but. You know, it's, it's interesting because when I was with my dad, I was, you know, I, would, I wouldn't act out as much. Preferably, I was happier with my dad, only for the fact of when I was with my dad, it was always something. I was always learning something. It was, I was always intrigued. I was always hustling, getting some money, moving around. He telling me a story. That's why I tell stories the way I do, because my dad's real melodramatic as well. You know what I'm saying? And he always had this, this certain type of charisma and finesse about him. My mom was uh was more like a homebody, you know what I'm saying? Me being mm -hmm. me being an outgoing kid, you know, I'm I'm running the streets. She in the house. So, you know, fairly fairly decent relationship with both parents growing up. I just stayed in a lot of trouble. So they always knew my teachers, my principals, my first name and shit. Call you on the phone. Mm -hmm. Hey Vicky. Stan. They just come up here and see about him. Yeah, come on, come on <laughs> to the school. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't know. I was I was a wild child. I wasn't a problem child. I was more of a wild child. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nah, I got you. Um, speaking of your pops, real quick, your pops he owned a, a hair care owns, product company. Owns yes. Oh, okay. current James, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us about it for a second. Um, you know it's kind of interesting because a lot of people don't know that. I, like I'm slick shy. Like I have anxiety attacks all the time. People don't know it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you never call it out, but have anxiety attacks around people. 
because sometimes I just don't want to be around people a, a certain energy, and I and I wouldn't understand. But when I would be like, we would be at a, a car wash just selling the air fresheners and stuff. Whenever I saw a pretty woman, I would get shy, I'd freeze up. Like, I, I don't know, what to, I can't sell her. So it took my dad to always go over and break the ice, and he'd always break the ice with a joke, a smile, mm -hmm. a compliment. And so as a kid, I'm like, oh shit, that's what you do. <laughs> You, you tell a little joke, you say something funny, you say something intriguing, you make a compliment, break the ice, you get the sale. So that kind of sums up how I am with people, how, you know, me being a people person, how I'm always breaking the ice. I can walk in the room and it could be tension in the room and I can walk in the room and break it, bow, 10 seconds. Everybody, ah, boy, you crazy, yeah, 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 cool. And I can walk out and it's, it, and that, that, that synergy left behind. So, you know, you know, it, it was like that with Pops, but the uh, healthcare line, Claudio St. James, he got this stuff right now called the jelly. That shit is some of the best selling shit on the market right now. You know what I'm saying? Because these braiders, That's they're dope. using it, they're using it to grip the hair, like an edge control. So it's great for edge control. But you know when they, when the girls get their hair braided or you get your hair braided and plaited, they have to put some on their hair to be able to grip the hand, hold the hair in place. So it's one of the best selling products right now on the market. He's doing this thing. I'm very proud of him because I've watched my dad work for decades and to see him at the point he had now where he actually Balling. I mean, he always got money. I never saw my dad broke, ever. I don't think I ever saw my dad broke. You know what I'm saying? If he was broke, shit, I didn't know because we had so much shit around. You know, when you, when you got shit, it don't look broke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, did, did he help you get a a, a jingle with Revlon? No, nah, he didn't. But what my dad would do, though, like, he would encourage me when we we'd go on the road and shit. i never forget him buying me these composition books. He'd be like, right, right. You gonna just sit over there and rap that shit and don't remember. Write that shit down. And I'm like, all right. So that like that. But uh, a cat by the name of Marcus Brown, who was managing me, introduced me to uh, Shayla Simpson, who actually was uh, she worked for Revlon, and uh, Shayla had that relationship with Revlon, and they needed a new jing a jingle for their lot of body line, and that's how that came about. So that was my first real check in a as a t as a as a adolescent I say because when I was younger you know I was in groups we win all the we won every talent show we did as a kid so I can't say this was my first check because those were checks we made money but as mm -hmm. an adult as an adolescent this was my first check where my name our name was written on the check and we were able to catch it and, and see uh you know compensation for our services rendered yo that's dope so you literally received a check yeah. from Revlon yeah. for writing the jingle yeah that's dope y'all yeah Okay, so school me. Where did the where did the music come in your life at? So, I always, to be honest with you, prayers. I was always like the entertainer of the family, or one of them, because it's, it's a couple of them in my family. You know, like a lot of my cousins on my mom's side. You know what I'm saying? Are very <laughs> animated, just as myself. So when people get around my family, they be like, "Oh shit, you ain't the only one." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, my Aunt Nedra, she used to always like, you know, she used to always have us doing shit on the porch because my Aunt Nedra was the youngest auntie of my mom, sisters, and brothers. So by her being the youngest, she was way younger than them, so she was closer to us. So when we'd be at my grandma's house, we with Auntie Nedra. And so Auntie Nedra sent her board and shit, got us doing shit, and it was just one of them things. i never forget her having me around. J A R all the letters of my name, cutting and then scratching all the aspects of my game. You know what I'm saying? That was the first time, and we do these little fast talent shows on the front porch and shit. And when I would do it, I always put a little extra into it. You know, I go, I run the house and put on something for, you know, costume accessories. You know, the purpose of just we having fun. Might as well go all out. So, whenever I would do it, whenever I did some, you know, my cousins would always react just a little bit more, and I, I felt like that was the inkling to me. Um, that said, uh, you know what, I could, I could do whatever I want to do if I just do a little more. If I do a little more than what everybody else doing, not just a little more, but if I do more, you know, and put more into it, more emphasis on the creativity and the delivery of what I'm doing, I always get a better outcome. So that's always been my mindset since a kid. Got you. Okay, so speaking, of, speaking of a kid, you had your first kid when you were 17, no? No. I had my How old was you when you had your first kid? My first kid was, I was 20. Oh, you was 20? Yeah, I was 20. So by that time, did you have your record deal? Nah, hell nah. But 
by the time I had my first son, Amani, my oldest son, I already was, I was already destined for this shit at that point because I was working, I was touching shit, I was dealing with people, you know what I'm saying? I was moving around, you know, my girl Miss B, you know what I'm saying? Got her with Nitty, you know, Chino introduced me to Nitty. I introduced Miss B to Nitty. Nitty took Miss B over to So So Deaf with JD and Zumba. Mm -hmm. So when me and her got, got our thing going, because I was a hype man, but I also played like that liaison too, because I knew how to talk to people. I knew how to break that ice. So all those relationships while I was moving around, I was actively just making sure I, I, I reached back out to people. So I'm in all these different cities and markets and I know the DJs, I know the promoters, I know the dope boys in these markets, I know a few strippers in these markets. So I made sure that when it was time for me, I had people I could reach out to and that's what I did. I made sure I nurtured those relationships. Okay, how did you and Nitty get that close? Because I know I know you just told us how you met him, but it seemed like y'all had a special bond. Well, well no. <laughs> all right. So here's the deal. When I met Nitty, I met Nitty through Chino Dollar. Right? Mm -hmm. And I went and rapped for Nitty. He was like, yeah, you all right. And you know, I'm looking at this motherfucker like, I'm all right. Nigga, who tell you you just all right <laughs> to your face? I'm looking at him. I'm like, he entitled to his opinion. So him saying I'm all right, he gave me some beats. He's like, he all right. I'm like, all right. So at that point, I was like, he don't, he don't really fuck with what I got going. He ain't rocking with my sauce, so it's cool. And um, so we went to a meeting with ASCAP, with Ian Burke. And um, I saw Nitty. I'm like, boy, what's up? I'm like, hey, hold on, hold on, let me give you something. I'm going to give you this CD. I said, look, I don't want nothing from you. I ain't asking you for shit. I just want you to give me your honest opinion about this. I said, this my little sus right here, all right? I said, listen to this shit. Just tell me what you think. Here go my number shit. He's like, yeah, well, what Chino? I said, Chino doing his thing. We good. I said, me and Chino, we rocking. We still good. He's like, all right, I'll listen to it. So I go back inside, but nobody saw me make this move because I went to the car for something. I, I didn't go to the car because I didn't even know Nitty was there. When I saw him, I handed the CD. When I go back inside the meeting, uh, rest, in, rest in peace, Carolyn Miller. She was in there. That's who set the meeting up. Miss B, I was in there. And Ian Burke picks up the phone. He's like, oh. He looking around the room and shit. So I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck going on? You know what I'm saying? Cause he was looking concerned. <laughs> like, get these niggas out of my office. So I was like, so he hung the fuck. He said, who's Jock? So he said, who's Jock? All these people, his assistant, people that's in up with me, everybody looked at me. And I was like, he was like, oh, all right. Nitty said he love it. So I was like, oh shit. What? Yeah, so he was like, oh shit. So they was like, who is Nitty? Cause they trying to figure out who did I talk to? How is this man on the phone? Cause nobody, they thought I went to the restroom. Mm -hmm, but I went mm -hmm. to the car, and that's how I saw Nitty outside. Nitty was never even in the building. So then they like, well, when the fuck did you talk to somebody? So that's basically how me and Nitty got looped back in outside of Chino, you know what I'm saying, with the Miss B shit. And it kind of created a situation because Nitty already had this group of guys that I fucked with. They were called the Slit Boys from the east side, and I really thought these niggas was going to blow. So J Nitty had a deal with J.D., and these niggas have been riding with Nitty. They they rapping mm -hmm. all they rapping like a motherfucker on Nitty beats. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm hearing that shit, I'm like, boy, this nigga got a squad of niggas can rap. You know what I'm saying? So I never forget when we decided to get down with Nitty. Nitty was like, nah, I'm gonna redo her record. And I didn't know that's what the case was. I thought he was just gonna get on board with us and produce some beats. But a cat out of Memphis, this dope ass producer named Matt Rod, who was with Carolyn Miller, rest in peace. He did the original beat to bottle action. I mm. hit that bitch with a bottle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. So when Nitty started talking about, yeah, I want to remix it, it created tension for me because everybody was like, who the fuck you done trying to hook us up with? He trying to push our nigga out the way so he could do the beat. I'm like, yo, I just made the play. I ain't know he was doing all that. So I never forget, we do the beat, we do the shit over, and that shit catch fire instantly. All is just going. So the slick boys was feeling some kind of way because then who the fuck is this new little bitch Miss B coming out the blue with this nigga Jock? <laughs> like, what? So now they like, it's one slide open to get this deal with, with So So Deaf. And they like, nah, this bitch not finna take our deal. So when she got the deal, Nita was definitely happy with me. Like, nigga, yeah, woo, 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 I'm do this shit. I'm like, cool. And so it was interesting because the way it played out, Slick Boys, they started beefing with Nitty. 
Cause they felt like, nigga, you just gonna leave us out here for this little bitch. You know what I'm saying? That's how they felt. Them nigga was dead for real. Them nigga was talking about killing Nitty. Like, them nigga was dead ass for real. I'm gonna be honest with you. Damn. Nitty got down, them nigga was putting pressure. They was applying pressure so hard that Nitty moved out his motherfucking studio. Yo, he got that real job? Yeah, he got yeah, yeah, cause them niggas some real, them niggas some street niggas. Yeah, yeah. We ain't talking about no nigga playing street. I mean, he was some real, it was some real street niggas like on some, like, like. Nigga stomach touching they back. Nigga hustling however they can get it. Nigga, if I got to sell this, sell that, nigga, I sell you. It was these type of niggas. So, <laughs> and Nitty, just think, these his niggas. So if they wasn't a real threat, Nitty wouldn't have moved. Because he, exactly. he just vacated from out his spot. So when he vacated out his spot, we got Miss B shit. That shit was going. You know what I'm saying? But it had kind of started slowing down at that time. It was, we was going, but it didn't just like super explode. But we was traveling and whatnot. So Nitty ended up getting with Chino and, and setting up his studio in Chino basement, right? And never forget this shit. So, Nitty didn't, they didn't ever give me my percentage on that record, Bottle Ash. They didn't give me my publishing, my writer's credit, none of that shit. And it was fucked up because I was like, damn, hold up. But I was like, it's just one song. I know I got, I got plenty more in me that I could, we, we gonna win on, so I ain't wanna, I ain't wanna stir the pot, I ain't wanna ruffle no feathers. So I just kinda, you know how a young nigga kinda just fall back, like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this shit cool. So I never forget Nitty making a beat in, in, in the basement, in Chino spot. I went up. He got frustrated because he kept getting these threats. So he just like, fuck it, I'm finna leave, man. He gonna go. So Chino like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't, don't erase that beat. Let me get that beat. I'm gonna get the job. So when Chino got that beat, it was. <laughs> It was a beat that I had a concept for myself and Miss B. And I gave Nitty the concept. He took the, he took the concept to Gucci. And then it became a Gucci and Matt Breezy record. Shawty got her ass on her, on her. I'ma uh, put my hands on her. Uh. You know, remember that shit? Yeah. Uh. My shit was let me, uh. Just know I had the same goddamn melody. The same. Yeah, I, I said, I left my baby mama at the house. How? Tonight I'm going wild out, wild out. I'm a silk gray goose and pop crisp, pop crisp. I don't care, nigga. She don't run shit. Hey, I left my baby daddy at the house. At the house. So, me B called me one day and I'm like, hey, why you finna be mad as fuck? I said, what? She said, boy, that nigga needed a gang Gucci your song. I said, what you talking about? She said, boy, she done gave, boy, that nigga gave Gucci your song, and it's a motherfucking hit. I said, Freak said, he ain't called you? I said, nah, she like, Phew. but you gonna be ready to shoot that nigga. I was like, for real? So now I'm having this moment of, of you know the moments you always heard about them nightmare stories for artists? It's like, man, this nigga done got me. Y'all already didn't get me publishing on this song, and this nigga done gave my song to a nigga? So I never forget nah, going. This is that welcome to the music welcome industry. Welcome to the this music industry. 4080. Foo Foo 101. So I walk in the studio, he like, hey, but you heard, you, you, you heard the record I gave Gucci? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nah. He was like, that nigga hit. That boy rolled. I'm like, let me hit. Soon as he played, I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm finna shoot this nigga, dog. Like, on, on, on gun, on my mama, dog. I, I, like, I, I started like clicking, but I had to control that shit because I like, you can't be emotional. Like, I ain't wanna feel like no bitch and be bitching out about it, but then I also didn't wanna be played like I was no bitch either. So when he looked at me, he like, what wrong, dog? I was like, I would breathe. He said, what you think about it? You good? I was like, yo, he like, what you think about it? I said, I think that's my song, nigga. That's my melody. That's my, that's my everything. It's the concept, me and Miss B. Instead, you gave it to Gucci and Matt Breezy. And he was like, how your song went? I just walked out the studio. I just had to walk out the studio. So at that point, he knew he had crossed me. He knew I was upset. He knew Chino was upset about it, cause Chino the one who got there and told nigga to say the beat. You feel mm -hmm, me? Mm -hmm. So now I'm sitting here like, man, this nigga done gave him a song. Like, what the fuck? Even if, even if, if even with even with Gucci see this, even if Gucci remember, I don't know. But you know how a producer can come in there and say, I, mean, I think you should put a girl on this. He might he might Gucci may have never heard my words. He may have never heard the uh, the original melody from me. But if Nitty as a producer say, you know, son, da 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 da, da you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So Gucci may be looking like when he hit it, he might be like, what, what? 
But this the fucking truth. So at that point, you know, Chino was telling Nitty like, hey man, but y'all hot, boy. And people got them, you know, you know, we me and him rock, but he got his own set of niggas and shit. You gotta fix that shit. So then Nitty come to me, hey, 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 look, look, look. When I give you one, I'm gonna give you that one. Gonna take you out of here. I'm looking at him like, motherfucker, that would have took me out of here. What fuck is you talking about? He like, nah, nah, I'm gonna give you that international motherfucker. Trust me. So we wait months and months and months and shit, and then Chino hit me. Chino hit me. Chino say, hey, open the, open the guy. Uh, we're gonna meet with Nitty. He ready to go in, which I'm like, I'm looking at Chino like, man, fuck Nitty, man. I'm like, man, cause this, I'm like, bro, gonna goddamn make something, got make a nigga do something. You know what I'm saying? So he came to the house. Chino skitting the nigga down, five X, like 4,800. It was five, it was, he wanted 5,000. Chino gave him 4,800. And it was something he owed Chino a little 200 or something, so he like, don't worry about it. I remember Nitty walking out the door, I said, Chino. I said, bro, you better get a receipt from that nigga. He like, nah, that nigga fell. <laughs> he's not my boy. I like, no, that nigga not, bro. I like, that nigga not, man. I'm telling you. I said, we need a receipt to show that we paid that nigga. She's like, man, don't, that nigga gonna give us, he gonna give us one of the ones. But I'll never forget going in the studio with that nigga. As soon as we got in, I was in here like, here go my shot. Here's my one shot with this nigga, because if we don't get nothing <laughs> out of this nigga, I'm probably not gonna fuck with him again. You know what I'm saying? And I'm being truthful, because I, I genuinely, originally, I liked Nitty. I was like, man, I like him. He's just a hood nigga like me, you know? And uh, we went in there, he went to hand them goddamn keys. It's like, as soon as we walked in there, like, mm, 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 mm. I, I like that sound right there. He's like, you like that? Mm. Everybody in the room like, yeah. Yo, so you telling me he made that beat on the spot. He didn't even have it waiting for you when you came in the studio? Nah. 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 Damn. Nigga kept making me mad. Okay, before before I don't before I dive into that, and I'm sorry to cut you off. I want to go backwards for one second. Did you ever have a chance to tell Gucci this story? Nah, because I ain't give a fuck at that point. Cause by the time you gotta think, it, it happened like relatively, like I knew I met Gucci through Chino. Chino Eastside nigga. Mm. So, for, so when I first was seeing Gucci around, we meet up at, we meet Gucci around town, different places. He had black tea. You know what I'm saying? Robin in my black tea. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know Gucci like that. I wasn't no East Side nigga, but I used to be like, man, home, like, he looked like he really out here robbing niggas. You know what I'm saying? And so by the time his record took off, I was so focused on getting my shit together that I came right back behind that shit and within damn near months. I came right behind with them months with it's going down. So it didn't even matter to tell Gucci about that because I, I had a bigger record than that shit. I wasn't even tripping. I was just like, fuck it. I don't even want no issue. I was just happy that I had my hit now. I didn't give a fuck about it. So even after y'all blew, y y y Jock goes on to, 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 to sell this, platinum this, records this gonna be the whole nine. This, I swear to you on my mama, dog. On my mama. This will be the first time Gucci ever heard this story. I'm that type of nigga. I'm a solid nigga. Like, like I'm going to be honest with you. The only reason I'm doing this shit right now is because last time I, 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 I heard your voice and Block was on this shit, I was like, nah, fuck nah. I got to get some straightening for real because all that shit kept. And you know, I ain't even that nigga, but I was like, nah, this shit kept. Like, I'm grown ass, man. I'm not going to be out here playing. So I told myself, you know, if I go on this shit, I'm a, I'm a, it's going to be a tell-all. And I ain't no tell a tell ass nigga because there's a lot of shit that I done been around a lot of artists that I, I know, put it like this, I know enough shit about enough artists I could have shattered a lot of niggas' careers because I, I was right there witnessing them do shit to niggas that they fuck with to this day. I was witnessing niggas do shit that could have sent their ass up the creek for, for life. I ain't never been no talking to tell tell ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it, this was just this moment. I was like, well, fuck it. I'm going to tell it all. Okay. We're going to get to the whole block thing. And, you know, I know certain things you want to address, and I'm not sure what, what exactly. I got a, I got an idea, but we'll get to that. Let's go back to your hit. So, Nitty in the studio. My first do, hit. Do, 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 do. My first hit. Do, 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 do. Let's your address it correctly, sir. Let's address it. My, my bad. There we go. You you hear it? The nigga, the, so he just Talk played. Talk to me through. He, he walked me out of the studio. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, just finish the beat so I can rap. You know what I'm saying? He walked me out of the studio, <laughs> closed the door. He like, you hear that shit? Do you hear that shit? He like, boy, that might be a problem. I'm looking at him like, <laughs> I mean, it's jamming. 
but I'm still not happy with you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I was still was just like, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when I went back in there, I took the beat home. He like, nah, don't, don't force it. Take it home. But at that point, I was trapping. I was trapping. Chino, Chino had the goddamn bags, you know what I'm saying? And I was trapping out mm -hmm. of goddamn Econo Lodge. And Hurricane Katrina had just hit. And I remember seeing some shit with Juvenile. I was like, damn, what the fuck Juvie got down? I'm like, damn, he down there in New Orleans with this shit. I'm like, damn, I, I was a fan of Juvie. And I was like, mm -hmm. what would Juvie do right now to my song? And I was, I was playing the beat instrument on the goddamn the CD player. And I just kept playing. And I was just like, it's going down. I was trying to talk like Juvie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So when I went back to the studio the next day, they were like, so what you got? I was like, it's going down. And them niggas were like, yeah. Then Chino and Nita were like, you need to say what the fuck going down. What, what the fuck going down? And I was like, shit, I don't know what's going down, but you could meet me in the trap. That was the first shit came out of my mouth. Meet me in the trap. And everybody said, they're going down. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And we just kept going. And, and before you know it, I was in there. We were doing a verse. You know, we did the verses. No, we laid the hook. No. We did the verses first. Then I came back with the hook. And me, Nitty, and, and me, me and Nitty kept arguing because I was like, man, can I please get a hi-hat in this motherfucking beat, dog? He would not give me a hi-hat. He like, nah, this was going to make it different. Trust me. I like, man, will you please give me a fucking hi-hat? Just the beat is not. He like, no, trust me. I was like, so then I had some other shit in the hook, too. Then him and Chino were like, nah, we're going to cut that shit out. We're just going to do this. And I was like, all right, y'all niggas just take over the shit then. Can't get a fucking high hat. I was mad. But by the time I walked out of that studio, I knew. Because niggas was coming in, it was like, you got to think I had been around right in, that, in, in, in the sector with Nitty. And niggas didn't know what my position was. They just would see me with Miss B or that with Nitty. And they don't know what. Them niggas didn't even know I rap. You know what I'm saying? Because I always just mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm watching niggas. I'm not letting you niggas know what I'm doing. And uh, I was watching niggas coming there like, the song come on, niggas like, but who are that? And then they'll be like, that nigga right there. But that shoe? When I was getting that reaction, I knew. I was like, yo, we out of here. I got one. Definitely. Knew it instantly. That's dope, kid. That's dope. All right. So you get this record. It's a monster. I mean, this, that's the one thing about hit records. You know them out the gate. You can't control that you shit. Know, it's, it, yeah, you can't control them. Did you put this record out independent first? Nah, what happened was, <laughs> so I had been, I had kept begging Carl Mo. Man, give me some beats, give me some beats, give me some beats. Carl Mo like, look, man, you know, you gotta be ready for this shit, cause when I give you that shit, I'm like, please, man, give me some beats. I want a Carl Mo beat, you know what I'm saying? Southside, I'm like, I want a Carl Mo beat. And uh, my nigga Fresh, Fresh from College Park, you know what I'm saying? Jermaine went to school with me. He was like, bro, I need to put you with Carl Moe, bro. I'm like, oh, you know Carl? I'm like, hey, I fuck with Carl Moe. He like, I'm gonna put you with Carl Moe. I'm like, man, please put me with Carl Moe, dog. I'm like, yo, let's do that. So when I when I finally hit Carl Moe, I go to the house, I play it going down for him. He looking at me like, bro, you don't need nothing from me. I'm like, <laughs> man, give me some beats. He was like, bro, you already, he like, you can't change this. He like, this change your life right here. He like, I'm, I'm going to do you better. I'm going to do you solid. I said, what? He said, nigga, I'm going to get you with block. And I was like, I don't really got to be with block, but to get the Diddy, yeah, introduce me to that nigga. Because it was either, I was going to either fuck with JD or Diddy. My mind was made up from the get-go. And the only reason I didn't fuck with JD, because Nitty, so let me tell you, I'm going to get to that. When, we, when I got with Carl Mo. Carl Mo went to talking and got boop, boop, boop. He set up a meeting with me and Block. Then that shit went fast. Me blocking Chino. Then this thing, no, me block Chino Grand Street. And once Grand Street got a hold of that motherfucker, it was a rap because he was like, nigga, Block, you my nigga. Carl Mo, you my nigga. I'm finna do this shit. So he just, that shit just started happening. Fat nigga called me, hey, bro, I think I heard your song. Like, I ain't even get a chance to put, bro, oh, God. I ain't even get a chance to perform this going down like that. That motherfucker was on the radio before I could even perform the shit. Are you serious? I swear to God, I was not even performing that shit. Me and Chino was moving around. I had a record called Thousand Ones. Um, I had a record called Thousand Ones. 
and now I know her. And I was winning every fucking show I was doing with them records. I didn't even have this going down yet. So by the time I did this going down, Block them was like, oh shit. So then we hadn't done a deal yet. So he was like, I want to see how you perform. Cause the nigga ain't seen me perform, the nigga don't know nothing. They just like, I'm looking at this little young ass looking ass little nigga. He clean cut. He talking that shit in the record, but I don't know if he, like, I gotta see this shit. So my nigga Keeney had the goddamn raw peacock. So I like Keeney, I'm gonna come in that bitch and I'm gonna bring goddamn some people. I think they're gonna be the shit to get me signed. I didn't know that shit was gonna be John Pat that night. So people had been hearing the song, but niggas didn't know it was me. So when I got up there, I did my original songs, my thousand ones, Grey Goose, Turn Around, Let Me See You Get Loose. I'm doing that shit, that thing, you know. I said, all right, y'all. I just want y'all to know I've been working on something quietly. Then my new single, I hope y'all fuck with it. And nobody knew of my song. So when that shit came on, the niggas in there who been fucking with me like, <laughs> did, did that shoe? And it just turned crazy. And Block went looking around like, what the fuck? Because everybody reacted. So it looked like some on a movie. It looked like some in the movie. You know how it was like instantly like, oh my God, this is hit everybody on your dick. Like, it just, but it was just the fact that niggas was already hitting the record, but then you know that was my record. Okay. So obviously, Greg Street is a DJ. Yeah. He in the clubs at that time. I think Greg Street he is more than a DJ, he's a curator. 100%, but yeah. where I'm about to go, I'm yeah. just saying, he got, you know, he got his feet firmly planted on the ground, yeah. and he know what's popping yeah. from the streets on up. Yeah. So for him hearing this record, he knew, okay, this is a monster. I got this. Man, Greg, and all my people, go ahead. He started championing that shit crazy. And it's crazy at the time, niggas, was, it was either you going to do some crunk music, or you were doing Snap. Crunk was going out, Snap was in. So yep, I was like, yep. shit. So I ain't want to be doing this on my shit. Cause I I I appreciated what, what the Snap was for my city. And because I'm from Atlanta, I knew the authentic feel and sound for Snap. So I didn't want to confuse people in other places. I didn't want to dirty up what I was doing with that or dirty up Snap with what I was doing. We was off of Crunk, so Crunk was still like, yeah, last little bit. So I didn't want to do that. So I wasn't doing this when we was doing it's going down. I couldn't do that. So I was doing the goddamn walk it out. Uh huh. And uh -huh. when I was doing the walk it out, because it was it, it felt so feminine, I ain't want to just be goddamn walking it out. Like, so I started pointing at niggas. And when I was so I was pointing at niggas like this. But I wasn't doing this, but I was doing this. And I believe that shit mm -hmm. caught, right? But when it hit the east side, the east side niggas was doing that shit. So Greg Street called like, Block, Jock, y'all gotta get puffed down here. Y'all gotta come see this shit with a club chocolate. Yo, when I play your song, these niggas got this little dance. It looked like they're on a fucking motorcycle. He like, I'm telling you, this shit look like it's gonna be the biggest shit ever. So I'm like, what? What dance these niggas got in my shit? I'm talking about? Like, how, who, who gonna put a dance to my shit? Like, nigga, I got my own shit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, let's go see. <laughs> So we sitting in that motherfucker cooling. We deep, we like 70 deep. You know, I'm a new nigga got the record. Niggas just knowing, no, this the nigga with that song. So I'm sitting there, so he said, hold on everybody. Club Chocolate, look here, man. I got my nigga Big Block, Eastside Chevy Ride in the building, Young Jock. Nigga, Cheeto Dollar, what's up, nigga? Hey, y'all show them nigga what y'all do to that nigga song. That shit came on, and when I seen that whole goddamn club, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I was like, you know, everybody look around like, why you finna blow up? I was like, shit, that's the, that gonna seal the deal right now. Cause the shit looked cool. It was like, nigga, what's happening? What's happening? It wasn't no, and nothing against walking out. I love, I, hey man, I love my cohorts from my city. That's why Atlanta bubbled the way it did. And we have done so well. Niggas show love, we, we rock with each other. Ain't no, nah, nigga, this my side, my side, my nigga gang, shit. Nah, nah, nigga was love. So that shit took off. That's dope, man. That's dope. Okay, so at this point, are you signed the block? At this time, we got this like, we got a furnishing agreement, but it wasn't a deal yet. You know what I'm saying? Explain it was like the a, difference. It was a first what right of refusal. It was a first right of refusal. And the problem came in because the way me and Chino deal was set up, me and, Dino, me and Chino was set up through Mastermind Music as, mm -hmm. as partners. 
So, so this is your label. Right, me and Chino Dollar. So when we did yep. this furnishing agreement with Block, the deal's supposed to went the way it went like that. And I guess the whole the whole thing with Block and, and Diddy having their relationship, Block, Harv, and Diddy, it was just like, them niggas just tried to strong arm shit. Because Chino, it was like, it was certain shit that Chino wasn't with, and I wasn't with either. And that shit just created, it just started creating like issues, man. It's like, hold on, my nigga, like, We don't do that kind of shit. That ain't what we do. We on this. Okay, so hold on. Before we even go there, because I want to make you, obviously, you know, Block is family. Um, and, and, and I sat down and I interviewed with him. And I just want to make sure we we at the same part of the story at the same time. Yeah. So when I spoke to Block, he was saying originally he was taking you. Like, he was like, I like Jock from the gate. Out the gate, I liked him. And I was taking him to Diddy. Diddy was, nah, I don't know about this one, Block. I don't know about him. So Block was like, yo, I'm going to come back to Atlanta. I'm going to heat this thing up. And then he went back to Diddy on it. But by that time, the dance had already been um, put to the yeah. song and all that. So w- when you say that there was a little uh, mix up with the with, it was it was it was complicated because of the way me and Chino contract was set up and the way their contract was set up. It's kind of one of them things. It happens every day. I can't get all the way to mm-hmm. the intricate detailing of it because it's going to sound like a bunch of jargon, a bunch of attorney yep. legal jargon. But when you say basically, hey, that's how I got out of the deal because it came about that I, I never was really signed with Block. By the way, me and Chino deal was set up. How you think I got out my deal? That's that's how the fuck I got out the deal. So the last time you, you when he said, "Oh, I shelved him," when they're talking that shelf shit, I was like, "Okay." I went and got the attorney I needed. I cut that check. We pointed out everything, the parameters in the paperwork, and and did he let me motherfucking walk? I wouldn't have been able to walk if that paperwork was strong. You get what I'm trying to say? So you, we people can investigate. They can say what they want to say. This could sound like bullshit to a nigga. But if I was able to walk and go do my own thing, free and clear, and I ain't have to pay nobody shit, then I think that's enough evidence to let you know what the fuck I'm saying is factual. Period, point blank. Mm. It's just that simple. So, okay, so again, you know, um, and I'm talking to to you who I consider a friend, mm-hmm. and we're talking about another person I consider a right? friend. It, I, I, I want to make sure I'm just understanding mm-hmm. You know, because Blocks, I asked him straight up, yo, Block, was there a problem with Jock? Like, what was the fallout? Because I know B- Block pushing me to push you hard yeah. to, to make sure, yo, yeah. prayers, I need this record to blow, just yeah. like he did for Gorilla Zoe, just like he did for Boys in the Hood, right? right? So when y'all started to have y'all falling out for lack of a better way to put it, nobody knew what it was about. And when I asked him about it, he said, yo, Sean, it wasn't personal. I mean, it, it, it wasn't business. It was actually personal. And that's where Rico, who nah, is a friend nah, of yours, nah, is a friend of nah, mine nah. coming to the picture. But the fallout between me and Jock was simple. When I first signed Jock, I had Rico Brooks. He was managing all my artists. Shout to Rico Brooks, yeah. another good, another good dude in oh, the yeah. music Sol- industry. Solid I love that come. guy. And, Solid as they come. And and um, and what a lot of artists don't know, a lot of people first off think they know every damn thing, but you don't know the music business. They don't know this relationship, man. This is a relationship based game. See, when I first came in, I'm from the street. I intimidated a lot of my um partners, the white <laughs> boys, and. But until they got to know me, and so I'm about that bread. Fuck all that. I had to have somebody come in and look like them, you know, school like them, and Rico was them. He was Come one on. of them. He was one of the boys. So they'll meet Rico first, and then let will go through. Rico said, well, you want to hire my partner? No, 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 we cool. So Rico always made it happen because they didn't want to deal with me. They thought I'd be on some street shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what they that was, that's what they thought. Cause you know, back in them days when street niggas was coming in, they always thought, "Oh, another shoot night." Nah, but I was like that bread by mine, so I wasn't stun that shit. But anyway, so I had a system set up, and I was like, "Listen, man, all my artists, listen, man, this is the system. 
You know, if I sign you, you got to let Rico, because Rico got relationships. Let him, you know, it'll be easier. And Jock rolled with it until it was over. The first year, I mean, the first two, three years, then when it was over, he just cut him off. He just fired Rico. I said, no. But what I didn't like about it, though, was they were just on vacation slash paid date. And you didn't pull your man to the side. They say, hey, man, listen, this shit ain't going to work. You know, to my lawyer. But when Rico got home, Rico had a letter in the mail from his lawyer saying, you know, you've been terminated. Bro, you couldn't tell this man. You've been on the road with this man for three years. You couldn't tell this man. Nigga, you fired, nigga. You know? Hell, I, I would love to tell the motherfucker you fired, honestly. In your face, nigga. But that's me. But so when he bucked the system, he said, I can't do nothing with you no more. And it was the hottest artist in the world at this time. So you cut Jock off because you're so loyal Absolutely. to Rico Brooks. Absolutely. Nah, that's bullshit. Really? That's bullshit. You gotta think, let, let's be for real. Nigga never seen a, uh, you never seen an artist with a work ethic like me. And just not just past, let's just say, fuck work ethic. You never seen an artist, all right? with a sound mind. At that time, niggas wasn't having sound minds. I was the artist, I did everything. Nigga, I didn't miss flights, nigga, I didn't miss meetings, I didn't miss radio. Nigga, you, you, you didn't have to drag me, you didn't have to beg me. Nigga, I was beating you there. First and foremost, I can you, you witnessed that, that. Just for the record, when, when, when for I the did, record. When I did my deal with Bad Boy, you was there. When yes, I came I to daddy's house, and they like, yeah, we throwing you this big ass party, the signing party. I'm like, oh shit, I'm finna party with Diddy nigga in daddy's house. And when I get in that motherfucker, it's a it's an isolated portable booth in the middle of that motherfucker. I got all these niggas in here popping bottles and popping champagne, beautiful women and shit. And you know what the fuck y'all asked me to do? 5,000 fucking DJ drops. I didn't say one motherfucking word. The party went on around me. I went in that motherfucking booth and I knocked out a stack of fucking drops this thick without no problem no hesitation that was me as an artist always in any aspect of what i did i never miss flights i never miss interviews i never miss show dates you know what i'm saying i was that nigga you asked me to do something i executed because i was really a fucking soldier so when we went platinum on new jock city when we went platinum and i said hey we did this shit you helped me this was one of the biggest dreams i always wanted to be a rap star and i wanted to be platinum but there was still underlying issues between him and Chino Dollar. You understand what I'm saying? And because they was, they was doing some fuck shit with the paperwork and how he was handling the business, my nigga got involved in other shit in, in the streets with the motherfucking work. When he didn't have to do that because nigga, we both supposed to be rich. Not me getting my part and he figuring, trying to figure out where the fuck he is coming from. So you know what my nigga did? He went hard in them streets. Now, lo and behold, the inevitable happened. He got jammed up, so he had to go sit down, right? Nigga was a soldier. Mm -hmm. Nigga ain't tell on nobody. Nigga ain't do none of that. None of that whole shit. He went and did his shit. So I said, Block, I need to advance on my second album. Oh, 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 Name a feature. None, okay then. Nigga went platinum with no features. So you ain't paid nobody. Name a big producer on my first album. One now. Okay then, nigga. So you where the budget at? I came with my own records. I came with this going down. I came with I know you see it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I came with a lot of those records before I even knew this nigga. So you done basically in real life, nigga, you done got them took an artist who came in with damn near half his project. So when we pay some money to mix some shit, maybe retrack a vocal here too, there, yeah, add a few songs, and you put it out without spending no real fucking money, nigga. That's the best layup alley oop ever. That's an assist, nigga. And you don't give me a, 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 a an advance on my second album. So all that fuck shit he was talking about about oh he went against Rico. No, nigga, you you you're the label and Rico's my manager. So when I'm telling Rico, Rico, I need a motherfucker. I, Rico, I need an advance man on my second album, bro. When these motherfuckers tell me I got a million dollar budget on my second album, nigga, give me a fucking advance. Nigga would not give me an advance. So that already, you started driving the wedge down. Like, how you not gonna feed your nigga, dog? If you, I'm a little bro, little bro, little bro, you love me, nigga, feed, make sure I'm good. Nigga, I got a family. You can't treat, see, here's the thing. I want no little kid. 
I was married with children. This nigga had children. Nigga, you might be a few years older than me, but we got the same goddamn responsibilities. We got kids, nigga. We got a household, nigga. You pay taxes, I pay taxes, nigga. You pay for petrol, I pay for petrol, nigga. If you get shot and bleed, I get shot, I bleed too. There ain't nothing no different. So it, 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 it just was like, damn, my nigga, really? So when it came down time to do the second album, I wasn't focus on really fucking with him like that in real life because it was like damn my nigga chino who don't even supposed to be sitting down right now not here with me i'm not i'm really not fucking with this nigga because you, you got you controlling my budget nigga don't want me to record nowhere but his studio man fuck all that dog i know what you're doing you want to eat off the budget nigga let me be an artist and do what the fuck i want to do and because i knew the type of niggas that was on my side with chino them okay Okay, some real street niggas that really wanted heat. And I knew the type of niggas he had around him. I was the nigga who took the hits. I became the buffer for all that shit. So I'm telling them, nah, I'll be cool. I'm telling these niggas, nah, I'll be cool. Because I knew what, what it would have turned into. Nigga, I was rich. You think I couldn't have had some niggas off? R nigga, the kind of money I'm getting every day, every week. You think I could have these niggas off? But I went on that. I went on that. You know what I'm saying? So all that other shit, I just, you know, you sit back, you like, damn. So while he telling the label, now nah, what happened was we, we recording here and now uh, I had a whole, so now he done start putting Zoe against me and I'm like, damn, Zoe, how you going against me, bro? You supposed to be my bro for real. Nigga, I told Block to sign you, nigga. What are you talking about? You know, Buck, Buck, Q QC, right? You mm -hmm. know, P. Buck's, Buck, Buck, who is P's brother, Buck. That's who brought Zoe. Him and Chris Flame brought Zoe to me for block. That's that's that whole play. That's how they ended up. But I also had the nigga Sonny Valentine. Remember Sonny Valentine? Yep. It was between them two. Me and Sonny had a record already. Sonny was with me and Chino. Sonny went on, did his own thing. He came back with a record with me on it. And it came down to who who they were going to sign. When Sonny started bucking and saying, shit, Jock, I can't even do that. I got my own shit going. I said, well, shit, block sign Zoe. And that's what the fuck we did. So when I seen Zoe, so when me and Zoe started having complications, I was just like, damn, what this nigga doing? I'm like, yo, th 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 this shit finna go wild because we don't have no real beefs. But it's like they're festering because of the way a nigga trying to micromanage this shit. See, but one thing with Block, Block, to me, Block was not savvy. Block wanted to be savage. And that shit didn't work. It worked in some instances. You got to know when and when not. You know what I'm saying? And bro didn't really know when not. It was always, well, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm like, bro, you fucking up relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like other artists couldn't come to the studio and record with a nigga. So you started fucking up that synergy. i never forget, I'm in the studio working. I got four hard drives plugged up. Zoe got like two hard drives. They all the shit chain link. Zoe walked in the studio. If I'm lying, God could take every one of my kids. Unhook his goddamn hard drive. That bitch wiped out four hard, four hard drives worth of my music for my second album. Was you there? I was sitting right there. I said, Zo, so this ain't fuck? hearsay. This ain't nah, hearsay. Nigga, I this sat right there and watched them. I said, Zo, what you doing? My, my session went blank. Boom. All the goddamn waves. That shit went gray. I said, bro, what you do? Nigga, that shit wiped out all my music. So when it came to the second album, all the shit that I really was trying to do, that shit was gone. I was sick. Like, <sighs> then I already was like, man, I don't even know. I, don't, I didn't feel like he tried to do that purposely. But with it already being like little underlying static with me, him, and Block, I was like, I don't know what the fuck going on. You know what I'm saying? So then that's when mm -hmm. that shit started festering. And I was like, you know what? I don't know, man. Okay, so so let me, let me play devil's advocate, right? Come on. Uh, don't play devil's advocate, a, nigga. Just be an advocate. Know. Don't be the devil advocate. Okay. Don't, don't do shit. Don't I'm going to ask you a question. For the devil. No, I ain't, I'm not just I just hate that. No, I just hate that saying. Question. We use that saying so fucking much. People, we use okay, that so shit. So how, how about this? I'm gonna ask you. Shit. I'm gonna ask you a question that it needs to be asked. Come on. In in 2006, yeah. You made it into Forbes' richest rapper list. Okay. You clearly was making. I think they had you as something like 10 million dollars a year right. that year. Yeah. That's correct. correct. Accurate. Right. Correct. And I remember that year, you did extremely well. 
We did extremely well. Very absolutely, we did. Question for you: How does a man who, if if I can recall, remember right, um, is going down went platinum? Number it, it touched number three on Billboard. Um, the, your 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 first album went platinum, certified platinum. When people were still selling physical records, not streaming, right. You're clearly making money, which means Block Entertainment is making money, which means Bad Boy Records is making money. Correct. How 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 can you not get us uh, in advance on your second out? I, I think that's what's throwing. Yeah, call, call them off. niggas. That's that's what I'm saying. How you gonna? Because no, we gotta we gotta go big. We gotta go big, and we want to make sure there's money left to do this. But then, and you, Puff you say, can get a cent- half say that half say you know. Uh, 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 say, you know, uh, 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 heavy breathing and shit. I'm like, dude, get it out. Let me hear this bullshit. Uh, we, we, we had to do, you know, like a million five. We ain't there yet. So, you know, I'm like, I'm looking at this nigga like, man, you don't But hear me out, Jock. But hear me out. I don't care if you get a single deal, an EP deal, you get an advance. Bro, that's what I'm telling that's you. That's my point. That's what I'm trying to tell you, bro. I'm like, nigga, how you? Not? It's just that point. It's just like, so you just gonna just gonna really just say fuck it. That right there, and I'm like, this money I gotta pay back, nigga. You better give me some money. But a nigga looking like, bro, you rich. Nigga, like, well, I done made you rich. Nah, nigga, you ain't made me shit. We all have collectively come together to make this shit happen to make each other rich, er, nigga. Like, you know, you did nothing by yourself, nigga. We, we wouldn't have got there if I wasn't showing up. We wouldn't have got there if I wouldn't have came with the music. So all that, what somebody did personally, I'll fuck all that. Like when he didn't give me that second advance, I knew I said, that gonna be long. I said, because he got, he, he has a struggle with power and, and I could see this now. And I just know the type of person I am. I was just like, man, I'll walk away from this shit because my niggas, okay. my niggas was like on some other shit. And I, so I had to distance myself from my niggas. So now I got, now here I ain't got a problem with block and I got a problem with my niggas cause they feel like I won't let them get no straightening. I'm like, what, what y'all gonna kill a nigga? What, what, what the fuck? I don't wanna be a part of that. So then now I got problems with my nigga. They like, oh damn, nigga, you t- you, you you fucking with that nigga. You ain't, you ain't looking out for Chino Dollar. I'm like, what the fuck, nigga? So, so I supposed to let y'all come in and kill this man? See, these are the type of conversations the world never heard. Cause it never mattered. It never mattered. It's, it's done. It's water under a bridge. Okay, fair enough. Y- you did eventually put out your second album. Yeah. Obviously, y'all came to some resolution. Yeah, because it was it was during that time when it was just like, and you could tell like it was it was it was we was trying, but it was a little shit, man. Nigga was having power trips, bro. Nigga was block was having power trips, man. It was just nigga was just rubbing everybody wrong. Nigga was rubbing everybody wrong. Nigga him and Puff, nigga, was him and Diddy was finna get into it in Miami, and I'm like, block, what are you doing, bro? I seen that nigga, I seen that nigga swell up on goddamn Kevin Lyles and Leo, nigga. I'm like, what the fuck is you doing, bro? You tripping about nothing, nonsense. Blocking Diddy, b- blocking Diddy, talking shit. We finna do the shit for the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? So we down there in Miami and shit. And so, so Block and Puff kind of play, play talking shit. And Puff got this new security, the, 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 the Marine nigga, the jarhead. I don't know what the fuck he is, El Salvador and Ecuadorian or some mm-hmm, shit. Big mm-hmm, built mm-hmm. motherfucker. He don't know Block. So Block went to talk shit. He ran up on, he ran up on Block. So Block like, hey, Puff, was you, there. you better get this nigga. And I'm like, so, so, so Puff like, Block, calm down. Like, nigga don't know you. It's good. So he like, nah, nigga, you heard what I say? You better get this nigga if I fuck you up. So Puff like, oh, nigga, you for real. And I'm looking at Block like, I know this nigga. So I'm like, this nigga for real. So then I'm like, what you doing? I'm looking at this fucking Marine. I'm like, block, this man finna kill you. You better chill out. So these niggas get into it. And I'm like, bro, so outside of the fucking, the back room, it's the fucking press room we about to do for this fucking Super Bowl shit. You know what I'm saying? We got this whole stage in Miami. You remember that shit? And I'm sitting here looking at all the cameras. The cameras are facing our seats on the stage. But the commotion and rah-rah coming from the back, all the goddamn cameras shift over <laughs> to the back. Certain shit like that started letting me know, yo, bro, you having a, you having a, you having a power trip and it's a problem. We, we got them come to goddamn New York for Fashion Week. We block. We get the fucking club bed. Kevin Lyles, Leo, and that motherfucker puffed there. You know what I'm saying? We get to the door. They're like, yes, sir. Uh, who are you? Oh, you don't know who I am? 
fuck you mean? Nigga, I'm big block. Nigga, hey, man, tell motherfucker Kevin bring his pussy ass out here. I'm like, the fuck wrong with this nigga, man? I'm like, hey. He's like, no, 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 nigga. I'm like, block, you tripping, man. He like, nah, I'm gonna get some, some, some straight on these pussy ass nigga. I told him, nigga, make sure I can walk in this motherfucking building with no problem. I like, well, chill out, bro. So we walk in the door, nigga, we, we done went platinum. We still got them dropping more singles and got other features. They happy to see Young Jock, you know what I'm saying? Kevin Lee or shit. And they walk down, they like, hey, they walk down, they like, nah, pussy ass nigga, don't be trying to play with me. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck is you doing? And just that fan, we walking right back out the door. Because you having a power struggle. Like, who the fuck want to be attached to that, my nigga? Okay, this is, um, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely a little different. That's your friend. I didn't expect it. I, That's your friend. It is my friend. Yeah. It is my friend. Yeah. Did, did, let, me, let me ask you something. Have you and Block ever had a chance to sit and just talk like men? Yeah. Any resolution? Fuck no. Nah, never been a resolution. Nah. Never. Nah, because here's the problem. After the second album, it didn't go platinum. It went gold. But that's it. That's an accomplishment. Okay, great, guys. Okay, let's hustle back up. So I said, you know what, Block? Y'all try to change the way I do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I don't, I don't like the way certain shit happening. I'm in the studio one day. We was finished wrapping up my album. Uh, I'm in the studio for a week with Pharrell in Miami. I'm like, oh, nigga, I'm in the studio with Pharrell. I'm like, this shit crack, nigga, this is Pharrell, nigga. So Pharrell like, yo, I got this concept. I was like, oh, it's like the clip shit? He's like, nah. I was like, well, what is it? Let me hear it. So he played his record and I'm like, the beat, and I'm like, that ain't, that ain't me, bro. He like, yeah, 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 listen to me. Like, Jock, like, you know, he trying to tell me, and I'm like, Nah, that ain't, <laughs> I don't fuck with that. So he tried to give me this cadence. I'm like, okay, I said, damn, it's for real. I can't, I can't go against for real. I'm like, Sigh. so he's like, yo, nigga, when I gave the clips, do, 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 grinding, everybody thought I was crazy because it's beating and sound finished. He's like, I'm telling you, this one of the ones. I was like, okay, play it back, play it back. Okay, come on, for real. Let me take a shot. Let's take a shot. Right. <laughs> nah, uh, this is not it. So as I'm sitting there, I hit the door open. Yeah, baby. I, 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 I hear Jay Z. I'm like, I know Diddy coming <laughs> in. I'm like, is that Jay Z? I just heard. Nigga, Jay Z, Diddy, all these big motherfuckers from the labels and shit coming that motherfucker. They fresh off the yacht. Niggas got cigars. Niggas stank like cigars and motherfucking stone crab. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, rich nigga shit going on. I'm like, nigga, I'm in the studio with Pharrell, Jay Z, and Diddy. Even though I'm signed with this nigga, I'm just still like, man, God, you are amazing. Mm -hmm. So Puff was like, all right. Pharrell, we heard, we heard you got that, we heard you got a, a motherfucking missile, a heat seeker for my young boy. Young Jock, young Jock, we finna hit that ass again. That nigga, the nigga <laughs> Jay-Z was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, nigga, I'm looking at Jay-Z like, nigga, you is in my session, nigga. I'm like, <laughs> it's some cool shit right here, my boy. The nigga played a song, everybody face like, you know them New York niggas, they got them like, ooh. <laughs> nigga, Hove go like, oh. he looking at me like. Oh. And I'm saying to myself, bro, is this the one, two? Is they trying to get all these niggas to sell me on this shit? Or am I tripping? Because this shit is not for me. I just don't hear me. I don't hear Mr. Young nigga from Atlanta on this fucking beat. It's a good beat, but it just ain't for me. And it's for real, bitch. I know this beat gonna cost. If, if I'm gonna pay for a hundred thousand plus for a beat, that bitch better. My mama, my grandma, them better be wanting to sing on that bitch. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, that nigga Jay Z said, cut it, cut it, cut it, real, cut it for real, cut it. Nigga hit the beat. <laughs> that nigga Jay Z turned me. Everybody in the room looked at me. He said, Yo, Jock, if you don't use this for your record, I promise you, I'm gonna make that my single. I'm looking at Jay Z like. Shit, I can't let you tell me this is smash and I don't take it. <laughs> I said, you can have that shit. You can have that shit. Respectfully to Pharrell, because he had so much other shit that I wanted to do, but he was trying to force this shit on me. I didn't do it. 
And I was like, nigga, fuck that shit. Then I looked up like six months later, and that shit was on the radio. It was Jay Z for the motherfucking Blue Magic. What was the song? Blue Magic, right? For American Gangster. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm in the cold. Oh, you passed on that joint? I passed on it, but that shit ain't for me. Even if you listen to it now, like nigga, that shit was a big. It was a. J, it was Jay Z, but it still didn't fucking. It wasn't no whoo ten million or two platinum record. It still was. It was Jay Z on a record. It was like a rollout for this fucking movie soundtrack for his album. It wasn't like oh my god, niggas, we weren't playing that shit in Atlanta. Respectfully to Jay Z and Pharrell and anybody else involved. I don't mean no disrespect, but that shit wasn't riding for me. But Jay Z got on. I was like, now that's who the fuck belong on it, not me. Okay, so t okay, let's let's talk about let's talk about another monster record you had for a second. Uh, T Pain, buy buy you a drink. Yeah. Arguably, probably the biggest record that you have ever been a part of. Record to this day got something like 500 million views on Spotify. And when the record dropped, I don't even think Spotify existed. Nah, so definitely. that record is crazy. How'd that record come about? You know, I told this, this story a few times. I never told it like on a platform for the masses. I always tell it to people individually because, you know, it'd be always story time with Jock. If you know me, you know I tell stories and shit. Not lies. I'm saying I just, I'm a storyteller. And, uh, <laughs> And I never wanted to make this shit public, but I'm doing it today. Fuck it. <laughs> we open the floodgates on any and every fucking thing. So <clears throat> we at the answer. What is the antebellum? The answer. We in Dallas. Okay. We at this fucking hotel. Is it the antebellum or some shit like that? Anyway, so we about to go do this big ass car show. Maya, Young Jock, T Pain, BG. Shit was like lit. The, 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 the rundown was crazy. It was like. I was like, this shit finna be lit. This nigga T Pain was like, oh God, I wanna meet Lil Flip. I wanna meet Lil Flip. I'm his biggest fan. I'm like, really? Oh. I'm like, I fuck with Flip. You know what I'm saying? Even though I know him and Tip had their little shit, I don't give a fuck about nobody else's shit. I I liked Flip. You know what I'm saying? Flip was cool with me. Like, I, we didn't mm -hmm. hang out, but I personally liked Flip. You know what I'm saying? I loved T.I., but I liked Flip. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> BG come down, T Pain, like, hey, shit, BG, Wah. you know, he, he, that yep, show yep. love, right? He leave. The nigga Flip come down, like, Flip. Then they like, cha ha, what's up? What it do, baby? I'm like, shit, what's up, my boy? We talking, boo, 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 boo. The nigga T Pain, <laughs> Pain gonna hate me for this. Pain was like, ah, put it there. And that nigga Flip <laughs> was like, yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh. It's just like this pain, like on some pain was excited, like, like he was a fan of Flip. Like he was like, nigga, I, I've been wanting to meet this nigga. Put it there. You know, like, you know, like on some white boy shit. Hey, put it there, chum. Like Flip mm -hmm. wasn't Flip wasn't feeling none of that. Flip was like, nigga. And walked off. So I was like, damn. So that shit hurt pain feelings a lot of bit. Not a little bit, a lot of bit. We go do the show. Frank Payne come back. He like, man, that shit really fucked me up with Flip. I was like, I was like, man, fuck that shit, man. Let's go get some drink. He was like, man. I was like, nigga, drinks on me, nigga. I'm buying all the shots. He's like, for real? He's like, man, I knew I fucked with you for real, real nigga, man. You, you a real nigga. You going places. He was just talking shit. I go to the bar, get all them niggas drunk. We have a good ass time, right? We off tour, because we was on all kind of tours. I was on TI tour at the same time. I was on a Bow Wow tour at the same time. I was on a bunch of tours at one time. And when we finally got finished, T-Pain said, hey man, I need to talk to you. I got this song, I need to. He kept pulling up to the studio. Then everybody said, man, this nigga done pulled up to the studio. This nigga is up here waiting on you. They like, do you owe this man some money? I'm like, what the fuck y'all talking about? They said, this nigga will not leave. Then nigga said, he not leaving till you get here. And I think he for real. So I'm like, what? So when I pull up, I see this pretty ass donk outside. I'm like, this nigga is hell, okay? So I go and he like, look, Jack, I gotta tell you something. Okay, uh, so he had put, um, not st uh, the hell was my boy's name from Atlanta, was writing for a bunch of people. Uh, Stat Quo. Okay. So Stat Quo was on, got them, buy you a drink. And he was like, and that nigga stand quick. He, he sounded fucking good. When I heard the record, I was like, oh shit, nigga got a good ass record. When he played that motherfucker, I was like, whoo. Soon as he played, bam, 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 bam. 
it took everything getting me to not fan out on that shit. Cause I was <laughs> like, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, Okay, okay, that shit not hard. So I had to keep my composure because I was just at the hill with pain. That nigga started singing, I was like, Phew. I'm like, this out of here. He said, Yeah, uh, Stat, that's my nigga. I love him. That's like my brother, but you know, that time we was in Dallas, man. He's like, How can I make a song called Buy You a Drink? And you probably the only nigga ever bought me a drink. Pause. I was like, You <laughs> silly. He's like, You remember that shit? I'm like, Yeah, I remember that shit just happened not that long ago. It was like, by then, it was like eight months later. He's like, yeah, man, you you know, I was hurt about that shit. And you came and you got me and all my niggas drunk. He's like, how could I not help a nigga like this? And he was like, and, and respectfully, I ain't, I ain't saying nothing that can't be repeated to the only nigga face. Payne said, Jock, I need you to help me get back on. But in my mind, I'm like, nigga, you T Payne. You got the love with the stripper, you and that booty with candy. I'm like, nigga, you, you popping. But in his mind, he like, nah, I ain't where I supposed to be. I got more in me. I'm just like, nigga, I do it. Did the verse. Myth. Myth hits. Hit me. Yep. Like, Jock, we got the verse. We're going to check it out. Call you back. Nigga pulled back up to the studio like, yo, that ain't it. Excuse me? He like, yeah, you rapping. You rapping, rapping. We don't, we don't want you to rap on it. I'm like, well, what the fuck you want me to do? He like, we want you to do that jock shit, that lazy rap. Pimp shit. He like, use it, it's going down voice. I was like, oh. So that's why when the first one, won't you meet me at the bar? Cause like, meet me. So mm -hmm. I just did that yep. shit. True story. Again, Greg Street champion some shit. I, I sent the record off. No, he he waited for me to finish the verse. When he got the, the, the shit, he took that shit right to Greg Street at V103. And I think he took it to him that night and I never stopped hearing that record after that. Who's he? Who took it? Who took it over? Mel Fitz took that shit to Greg Street. And I never stopped hearing that record after that. And Block was like, oh, no, oh, oh, I don't like that shit. I don't think I'm going to clear it. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck you mean you going to clear it? I ain't going to clear it. Mm -mm. Oh, I don't like it. I ain't going to clear it. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's a fucking hit. So then all the girls in the studio are like, Block, you tripping. Now they got them is like, nigga, you tripping. Nigga, this, a, nigga, this, is, a, this is the biggest record of the year. And it turned out to be just that. Record was a hit, man. Yeah. I mean, a certified hit uh, from day one. I remember when I first heard that record. Damn. Okay. Um, I be misunderstood a lot. I guess because a lot of times I don't share my, I don't, I don't be as transparent as, I, I should say, when I was real active in the music industry, I wasn't as transparent with what was going on around me or within me, and I think that's why when TV, when the people saw, able to see me on TV, they kind of like, damn, I didn't know this nigga was this, you know, like, this ball of life, this funny, this silly, or this emotional, because I kept all that shit balled up. That's why a lot of niggas have never heard these stories. The world, mm -hmm. some people like close to me have heard these stories, but the world never heard these stories. You know, do, do you miss not being as close to the music side of the game? No. Not at all? Not at all. Not at all. You've been doing music for most of your life. Right. It ain't no part of you when the, when, when a beat come on, you like, damn, I would have did it this way. I would have flipped it. Of course. That's just that. That's that's just, that's just human nature. Me to hear something and critique it and feel like I could make it better, I would have made it this, I would have been creative on this end. But when it comes to the music business, mm -hmm. man, it's just it's just so cutthroat and shysty, man. And I just hate, I hate fake shit. I hate like when... A nigga could supposed to be your brother, <laughs> but you, but you, but you, but you, quote unquote, put me on a shelf type shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with me giving somebody my money. They 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 capping me and gaslighting me like, yeah, I'm gonna spend it. I'm gonna. And then you don't. I don't fuck with niggas. One day we fucking with each other. We on a record today, but then because I ain't got a record out in the last six months, I can't get you on the phone no more. I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with, with the dick riding shit. I, I just don't. So to be honest with you, when we get to that part, I'm going to share what made certain things take place with me. Got you. Okay, um, before we move this, this, this on, just for the record, you officially off- Bad boy, you officially off block entertainment. If you decided tomorrow y'all wanted to make another record, you good to go. No strings attached. Man, let me tell you some real shit. 
tell you some real shit. You know I went and did other deals after that shit. I did a deal at J Records. I did my own label deal. That's how I was able to put out Hot Styles and GS Boys. You know, them folks gave me a million dollars to do that. You know, so early on, you know, when I came to Block with, 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 with Hot Styles, I said, Block, these little niggas just kind of got this little novelty record, but I think these niggas could be big. Fuck with me on this shit. We're going to take this shit up through the... Nah, look, bro, do what you want to do, bro. Shit, you the studio. I said, who I need to pay? Who I need to pay for the studio? He's like, bro, this your house. All that good shit. The good shit that you expect. Like, okay. Okay, man, bro, bro. Bro, 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 bro. <laughs> I, I hear this record. I, tur- I hear this concept. I get with them niggas. I fly them in within a week. We turn it into a record. By the time we turn it into a record. So basically, I heard that shit on a Wednesday night. The niggas was in town on Sunday. Meet me. Meet me, put that together. Meet me, who the world, well, you might know her. You know Meet me. It's at QC Records now. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, OG. Yep. She, 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 she put in work. Meet me, got them niggas to Atlanta. I told them niggas what it was, how we were going to do the deal. They was with it. I turned that shit to, from a concept to a record. I was already on the phone with uh, a few people. You know what I'm saying? You know, shouts out to Jeff Sledge. Shouts out to Barry Wise, you know what I'm saying? I said, look, I need y'all to take this meeting because I got a smash. I said, all right, fly up. So I had already put the whole shit together, the whole layout, the, the, the album cover I came with. The, since they joined the niggas, we got the gum. We got all these different novelty shits, the, the promo shit. So when I went to the meeting, it wasn't no, I didn't have to sell them. They was like, oh, you already know what this is. We know what this is, all right, let's go, let's do the deal. So some kind of way this shit get back to block, Block, imagine this, we're in a meeting with my attorney. We all signed this deal. We got this new deal. Yay. Advanced, you know, paper coming, the money coming. Yeah. We about to come see you in New Orleans for the core retreat. Mm. You, remember I came to, you remember I came to New Orleans for the core yes, retreat? Yes, absolutely. And remember, yeah, when we, absolutely. remember we came in the Bad Boy Suite and, and Hot Styles performed and them niggas were like, they let them perform for a minute like, yo, cut it. That shit ain't Bad Boy. Cut it. That shit getting too much attention. You remember that yep. shit? All right, let me absolutely. tell you. Absolutely. So imagine this. The day we're getting on the road, I'm walking out my house. These niggas, is some Chicago niggas, they happy. Uh, a nigga, a young jock that reached out to these niggas. These niggas got a deal, like, off some shit they playing with. And they they get in the van, they loading up with them. I took these niggas shopping, they happy. They finna come to the core retreat. And my attorney come and say, yo, I hate to inform you this, but whatever block is done, Jive dropped the deal. I said, what? The fuck you talking about? Block went over there and told these people that they can't, you can't do any business without him. I'm like, that's a fucking lie. She says, I know it is, but at this very moment, the deal has been terminated. I'm looking out, I'm locking my front door. I'm looking at these niggas in my van. These niggas is hype. These niggas lit. They happy. We've been drinking. I'm like, I can't break these niggas' spirit like this. What the fuck? I can't tell these niggas somebody I'm fucking with the fucked up they deal. I'm like, I I can't tell them. I I can't open my mouth. So I'm I'm gonna take this long ass seven hour drive. They lit. Why we finna be up through that? I'm just all the way there like, nigga, we ain't even got no deal, nigga. I'm like, what the fuck? So for me to come down to core retreat, being the bad boy and y'all and y'all joint, that shit was lit. Them niggas performing and them niggas, people like, oh yeah, that's that song. That shit blowing up because it was all the DJs. The DJs already got the song because we done already started working it. And when they cut the music, I remember looking at you like, ugh. It's not bad, boy. But you, you feel me. And I'm like, it's good. We did what we came to do. And I left. So I had to go back and renegotiate it because now Block saw that the deal was real. He wanted a part of the deal. But I offered you a piece of the deal from the get-go. He didn't believe in it. But once he saw that it was real, he felt like, oh, yo, no, no, no. I got to be a part of it because this young nigga smarter than the average rap nigga out here. So he already doing deals. He already went and got him another fucking deal. You get what I'm saying? So that's when I knew then, like, you know what? I want to fuck with him. So he made Jai cut him a check for like 25000 and made him a part of the deal. But the way it was set up, he wouldn't really get no money off of it, but he kind of got some money up front with the 25000 See you know what I'm saying? So it was moments like that that was like, damn, bro, you keep hollering this bro shit, but you doing, you doing worse than what fuck niggas in the street doing. Then when I came back with the GS boy, do the stanky lid, do the stanky yep. lid. I said, hmm, day 26 is going to be coming with a record in a minute. I want to show Puff and Harv and Block. I got love for y'all. We're going to do business. Let's do business. 
getting them a deal. I go and get day 26 and put them in the video with the GS boys because I knew this was a fucking hit. Day 26 needed this look outside of just some reality TV shit and kind of having hits, but being fueled by this network. No, they needed a, a bona fide a placement. So I got them, I don't spend all this money to put these niggas up, put them in the video. I didn't even have to do that. When it, when it was time for it to come out, half and block calls my fucking phone because they saw an edit of the video. Half, now he just saw block jumping my deal with the, with, the, with, the, with the hot style shit. So they try to run this shit back on me, right? Yo, who the fuck you think you are? Get my fucking artists and put them in your fucking video without talking to me. Okay, slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, nigga. Harv is, Harv is the nicest, sweetest. For anybody who don't know, Harv Pierre, th this, is, this is blood. This is family. You, you cannot tell me Harv Pierre called you up while in, on, on you who is essentially his artist. There's no way you can make me believe that. I don't have to. Just think about it like this. If you feel that certain about Hoff, right? And if yep. Hoff has that same type of outlook about Block, and Block come tell him, feed him some bullshit, he go, he going to shoot from the hip. And that's what the fuck he did. Because whatever Block came and told him, I guess Hoff believed that bullshit. So he shooting from the hip about his nigga. That's what the fuck it was. And I agree with okay, you. Okay, so Hall was always one of the coolest, most realest niggas I ever met. One Straight of the realest. Up. And I say yep. that shit, but at that moment, Hall went to talking that crazy New York shit in my ear on this phone. Nigga, I'll sue the pants off you, nigga. You'll be so far on the ground, no one will ever hear from you again. Now, you better make it right with Block. I'm like, well, what the fuck you want me to do, Hall? Nigga, I want you to cut Block a check for 25000 for you being in the video, and I want 25000 for day 26 being in the video. I said, Hall, Block, I love y'all, but y'all can suck my dick, and I hung up the phone. And you know why they pushed that button on me like that? Because they figured this nigga need a look. It's no way as an artist he going to edit himself out of a video. It's no way. Them niggas is... Day 26 is all through this video shooting hoops. How, what are you going to have to go back? He going to end up having to spend it. He like, Jive, they not going to say, let's cut these niggas out of the video because now you're going to end up having to go back and spend 50 to reshoot the shit. So you might as well cut Block and Harv a check for 50. I said, fuck y'all, suck my dick. I cut Young Jock out the video. I cut Day 26 out the video. I put that motherfucker out and that bitch still went platinum. Like okay, that. so let me ask you this. Okay, let me ask you this. Why not from the gate? Why not from the gate? You offered Block to be part of um, Hot Styles from the gate. Yeah. You said he passed. Because. Why not from the. What? Okay. Go just, just hear the question. Why not from the gate? Just say, yo, Block, I'm about to do it again. I got another 25 racks for you for GS Boy. I did. What the fuck I got to give? Why? You already showed me. Nigga, when I gave you the opportunity, I came bearing gifts. You said, no, I don't need it. But then you circle back behind me and shoot me in the back to make yourself a part of this. When well, you never had to do that. That's like I say, hey, bro, I got some money for you. Nah, bro, I don't need that. Then when I turn my back, you got them pick my pocket. That's fuck shit, dog. So what the fuck I'm going to come back to you with offerings for again? I know how you pay. You're a snake, nigga. At this point, because you treat a nigga who done got down, we done helped each other make a name, a brand, make all this fucking money, not just for me, not just for you, but for, for bad boy, for Atlantic nigga, for anybody else involved nigga, and you talking that fuck shit? What the fuck I'm coming back to you? I did, actually, as a matter of fact, now that you say that, I did. When I got the deal, once I really got the label deal with Barry Wise, before I got GS Boys, because I had to get a label deal, I said, I don't want to just do no single shit, I need a label deal. I got my own studio, everything set up, I need that million. They said, we're going to do the deal. I went to Block. I said, Block, yo, Barry Wise is here. We was at, what, what was that out in Arizona? Was it All-Star? It was All-Star? Yeah, it was, it was All-Star. Yeah, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Barry Wise was like, yo, Jock, come meet with me. I want to give you this deal. I, 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 I'll I sign. I'll do whatever you want for this deal. I said, Barry Wise, I fuck with you. I went and told Rico. I said, Rico, I need to talk to Block because I'm about to do this deal. And I'm thinking, should I just say, hey, Block, you want to be a part of this so we don't have another run-in? And Rico was like, yeah, I think you should do that. So when I Yeah, talk, that would make sense. So when I talked to Block about doing it, but why? I don't got to fucking do nothing with you. 
My paperwork ain't set up where I got to do business on what I do outside of Young Jock. I don't got to do business with you, but I tried to do that initially. And when you fuck me on that, what the fuck make you think I'm going to come back with it again? But I did because I'm a real nigga. I'm solid like that. Right? So when I came to him, you know what that motherfucker told me? Oh, well, you got to make a decision today. I'm, I'm not being in bed with no swag team. Either it's going to be Young Jock business or swag team business. If it's Young Jock business, we can do whatever you want to do. But if it's swag team business, I can't fuck with it. I said, okay, my mind is made. So when I left, how the fuck I'm going to do goddamn any business if I'm still attached to you through management with Rico? It hurt me. I cried to have to let Rico go. But I'm talking to Rico, and at that point, he couldn't go against the hand that's really feeding him. Block put him in position to eat with me. I didn't pick Rico. You understand what I'm saying? Was Rico that guy? Rico was that fucking guy. Do I love Rico? 100%. To this day. Was Rico a solid nigga? To this day. Do I still talk to Rico? To this day. Do I know his number by heart? Yes, to this day. You understand what I'm saying? So it hurt me more, but I had to get the fuck away from this nigga. So I said, Rico, I got to let you go, bro. And I had to. That's what I had to do. So when Block did this interview with you talking about, oh, he just let shit on Rico. No, I didn't shit on Rico. Nigga, you told me if I'm going to do swag team, you don't want, you don't want nothing to do with me and you're going to shelf me. That's what the fuck you said. So fuck it, nigga. You're going to shelf me. Let's cut ties today. And that's what the fuck I did in my mind. We cut ties right then and there. We severed them shits. And that was it. You feel me? So imagine this. I got the deal. Hot Styles got a second single. Assume the position. The same nigga, John Monopoly. You know John Monopoly? Fuck with yep, Kanye. Yep. Yeah. Of course. John Monopoly Chicago. was managing Hot Styles. John Monopoly said, yo, bro, I got a heat rock for you. This is producer and writer. They got two records, one for you, one for Hot Styles. That nigga brought me blaming on the alcohol, nigga. I was on tour with Crocs. I was on tour with Crocs. The little Crocs shoes niggas wear. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, on a yeah. fucking college tour with Crocs. The motherfucker gave me a big ass fucking bag. I'm like, yeah. I called T Pain while I was on that tour. I told John Monopoly, I'm calling T Pain, and we gotta get, we gotta put Pain on this fucking record. I did that. You know what happened? Shit is so crazy. You know what happened? What happened? The lead How nigga from Hot Styles had a goddamn he 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 had to turn himself in for federal fraud charges. And when I found out, the label called me. That's how I found this nigga didn't tell me. We on the tour. Jeff Sledge called me like, bro, this nigga got to turn his fucking self in and we finna put out this new single. Nigga, you cannot tell me you about to embarrass me like this. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I look over there. I guess some niggas heard the nigga through the phone. Them niggas was shaking their head like, yeah, I'm like, whoa, hold on, I'm calling you back, nigga, what? He like, yeah, I got to do three years. I'm like, what? So now I done made this deal with the writer and the producer for assuming the position and, 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 and blame it on the alcohol. So I called this nigga. I'm like, yo, all right, uh, okay, cool. So we're going to go on and do this deal. I was like, but look, can I go on and pay you for the blame it on the alcohol first? He was like, <laughs> he like, nah, because really, like, he like, shit, really, um, he like, shit, Jamie Foxx want it, but I'm holding it for you because I painted the picture for him. I said, shit, if you do it with me, you'll, you'll have a record out with Atlantic, if you, and, and, and with Hot Styles, you'll have a record out with Jive. I said, shit, then you got Sony ATV publishing with them, and you got motherfucking Warner Chapel publishing with me. I said, you're going to have a fucking payday. So the nigga was like, you know what? That's the fucking way. So when I called him, nigga, I was like, look, he's like, look, bro, you got you to gotta come on with him, man. I ain't hurting, but these niggas ready to spend this check, nigga. This is Jamie Foxx. I was like, all right. I did a listening session at my house. I bought some key people in from the, from the radio from Atlanta to my house. People that had never been to my house before, I brought them in for that. It's a true story. They heard two, they heard four seconds of, of blaming on the alcohol. And everybody said, stop it. Do it. Pay them what they want for both beats. Even if hot styles, are, give them what they want. I went upstairs. It's a true story. It's like a lifetime movie, nigga. I'm standing in my kitchen. Hey, bro. Hey, man, look here, man. Tell me where I need to go on to send this money to. I'm going to have my account wire you the money first thing in the morning. He's like, ah. I said, what? He said, it's already gone. I said, huh? He said, yeah, Jamie Foxx, they just sent the money. Nigga, I slid down the wall like a white woman on a Lifetime movie in the fall. Nigga, I just dropped the phone. Nigga, I just let that bitch hang up on his own. Nigga, I was like, damn. Yo, so this he, is one of the craziest stories. Nigga, so I'm sitting here like this shit over with. 
I'm, I'm crying. I, I'm, I'm laying on the top crying because I'm like, this is the biggest fucking record ever. So me and Harv had not really spoken because every time we talk, he's like, yo, you know, you got to get it right with your man. I'm like, yo, he telling y'all I'm not recording. I got all this fucking music. I said, Harv, I got the record right now that'll put us back on top. He's like, yeah, well, I don't want to hear it until you're ready to put out Young Jock. I said, it is Young Jock. He said, yeah, but you and Block got to make up. I said, I've been trying. I've been trying. This nigga just on some fuck shit. He want to show his power. I said, all right. I do 106 in Park one day. I never forget this shit. Had just did a record. Me and Nitty had got back good together, right? He produced this record. Jasmine Sullivan and Marsha Ambrose just sang on it. I never released it. Check it out. So I'm at 106 in Park. Here's Jasmine Sullivan. Shout out to her beautiful self. And I'm like, Jazz, she's like, hey, boo, what up, woo? Where we gonna put the record out? And I'm looking at her like, I may never get to put this shit out because these niggas got me on some shelf type shit, right? Your man's meal ticket walks in the room. Chuck, what up, nigga? Yo, come, come, come back. Come, come over to daddy's house, nigga. Come to the studio. I was like, we ain't really on the. He's like, man, fuck that. Puff know what's going on. I said, nah. He said, well, nigga, you need to come let him know. I was like, I don't wanna create no issues with him. And uh, Harv. He said, them niggas is brothers. Them niggas gonna figure that shit out. Them niggas been having problems forever. Who, who don't have problems? He said, have you ever heard of them having problems? I said, nah. He said, well, nigga, they real niggas and they have problems. And if you ain't heard, that means they know how to handle they shit. I was like, you know what? You right. I go over there. Nigga, I go to the studio. I go to daddy's house. Nigga, did he like, nigga, you the biggest nigga without an album on Slate to drop, nigga. What is we doing? I want to be in bed with Young Jock. I want to do the Young Jock business. I'm like, did he? Harv standing over in the corner, like, you better not say nothing, nigga. Harv looking at me like, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm looking at Harv, I'm like, well, shit, dude, I've been trying to put it together. I don't know why they've been lying to you. He's like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, man, I got smashes. He's like, you got smashes? He said, well, nigga, 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 you play me a smash right now, nigga. We putting your shit out tomorrow, nigga. So he got all the MTV cameras in there that, that he was already working on some shit. He wasn't expecting me. So all these people got cameras, niggas is behind the boards and shit. And I'm like... I gave it to the engineer. They got them blaming on the alcohol came on. That nigga <laughs> did it, said, Woo, we back, baby, bad boy, we back on top. <laughs> that nigga went, uh, uh, that nigga went uh, uh, through the house and like, I stopped it. He said, yo, don't nobody stop the motherfucking music till I say stop the motherfucking music. Play that shit back. I'm trying to stop him telling this shit gone. But, you know, so the nigga playing the music, that nigga like, oh, blame it on what? Oh, that nigga's this. That nigga's like doing the goddamn Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation. Goddamn right. That nigga doing the goddamn Michael Jackson Thriller shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at this nigga. That nigga Harv is over there. Harv face is like, oh shit, this nigga really got a smash. I stopped again. He said, Chuck, why the fuck you keep stopping the smash, nigga? I said, cause the smash gone, nigga. He said, what? Oh, no, no, no. Ain't none of this shit gone till daddy says gone. I was like, well, you're going to have to get on the phone with Breon because Breon, I think Breon did the deal. So you're going to have to call Breon and see if they can at least put us on the record. Or maybe you got enough clout to pull it from Breon or, you know, smooth your way through. That nigga instantly would start calling around to get Breon on the phone. The mood in the room went morbid. It was just like, the niggas holding the cameras was sad. <laughs> Nigga, I was sad. Puff was sad. Harv was sad. I was like, I'll see you guys some other time. Walked out of the studio. It was quiet <laughs> as fuck. You know what I'm saying? It was one of the moments in life, like, look, y'all niggas is playing. We got, I got us fucking heat rock, like, you know, but whatever. Okay, so through it all, it seemed like it seemed like you and Puff kept a good relationship. I never had, bro. Do you understand? I never had. I, I had one disagreement with Diddy. The whole the whole time I ever known this man, I had one disagreement, and you know what that was? Hmm. When we was picking my first album, and he called Block came in and said, "Hey, yo, uh, Puff say got now." You're gonna be able to put that knock it out on him. He don't like that shit. I said, shit, we gotta put knock it out on there. He like, I mean, you can call him. You can call him, Playboy, but I don't think he's gonna fuck with it. Hey, you know, it's puff. I like, no. 
a call puff. He's like, yo, you know, you know what I'm saying, Playboy. I know how you feel. These are all your records. They're your babies and all. But you know, you like a Playboy. You know, like you like the Southern bass. You like clean. I said, I hear all that shit. I said, but I do this record a cappella. I said, my album ain't even drop yet, but I do this a cappella. I'm going to just send you video footage of how the women react to it. I said that shit, that nigga called me back. That song was on the motherfucking song list. It made it. Once he saw that, you know what I'm saying? So I never had an argument with Diddy. I never had a run in. He never had to raise his voice in me. I never had to raise my voice to him. We ain't never side-eyed each other on no shit. So my relationship was good with Diddy. I remember one time Puff called me and said, yo, Playboy, get your bag, pack your bag, let's go to Cannes, France, nigga. We're going over here, we're going to do some big shit, nigga. we trying to get into some movies, nigga. What you want to do, nigga? I'm like, I bet shit. I tell Block, I'm like, yo, my nigga, uh, I say, shit, I'm going to probably go out there and take a few days. I'm going to go over here and fuck with Puff. Fuck, 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 fuck with Puff, well. I'm like, Cannes, France, no. 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 You ain't going. You ain't going. Nigga don't, nigga, nigga don't talk to my audience without talking to me. You ain't going. I'm like. I'm a grown ass man, so I'm looking like, what? I'm like, bro, I ain't no hoe. You I ain't no bitch. I ain't your bitch, I ain't his bitch. I ain't y'all bitch. Nigga, if I wanna go to France, nigga, I'm fucking go where the fuck I wanna go. But it created such a, you know, he had to kind of come and something like, nah, dog, see, you know, me and Puff, that's my bro. That's my brother. But see, it's gotta be a certain protocol. If he start doing it now, then you know, shit get out of hand. So I'm looking at this nigga like, so I had to tell Pop like, hey, bro, I ain't gonna need bad to make. I, I got so much shit to do, man. I'll catch you on the next one. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a little shit like that. It's like, my nigga, just crazy moments in time. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, it should be exhausting. Yeah, this is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, this, nah, this is a lot. This is a lot. And again, I wanna, um, you know, shout my man, because, uh, you know, shout my man, Harpy. I, I love that guy. And guess what? Death. I have no. Ill feelings with nobody. Now the one time me and Puff did, and I and I, and I think I, I went a little overboard. I was in my studio. I had just done my deal, my label deal with with with, with, with Jive, and I'm looking at the award show and I'm trying to get out my deal with Puff. Because I, I already got the technicalities, all the shit laid out. I'm like, nah, this, this shit ain't right. Nigga, this say that I can get out. This say I can get out. This say I can get out. It's like three different things that I can get out of the deal. And I'm telling Diddy, I'm like, I'm like, man, I, I need y'all to let me know something. I was sitting there and I was just sitting there like, man, I got, I got to get back to my music. I love this shit. I'm like, damn, man, I wish me and Puff was on good terms and shit. And I was looking at the war show and Puff was on the front row. He was laughing, he was kicking it. <laughs> and some came over me, bro. I was like, if you, I text Puff, God can take my mama if I'm lying. I said, Puff, if you don't let me out this contract on my mama, it will be consequences and repercussions anywhere you touch down and I can get to you. But that nigga hit back, yo, Playboy, who you? you don't, we don't talk like that, Playboy. I was like, yeah, I know. But I had to get your attention. I want out. I said, I didn't mean it like that. I only meant it because I need your attention, my nigga. Let me out. So when he, when he felt like, damn, this nigga really been a good, a good artist. Nigga never gave me no problems. He did everything we ever asked him. You know, kind of, even as a grown man, no matter what you being fed from Block or anybody, you see for yourself, like, this nigga never gave me a problem. So I think he knew, like, this just one of the things I got to sever the ties. Nigga let me out the deal, fair and square. Yeah, I think people give Puff a hard time. Um, you know, every, it seemed like every six months it's somebody else taking shots at the man. But one thing it's I kind of crazy because I never. I, I mean, I hear shit that you know. Of course, the world. I was in Puff, his artist, his artist. One thing people got to understand, man. Look, when you ain't moving in that direction as an artist no more, you can't blame people. I didn't, I didn't blame nobody. You don't heard me come up. I blame Diddy. I blame Puff. I blame, I blame Block. I blame her. You never heard me say I blame or anything. I ain't never been like, yo, my career would have been this because of that. No. When Block said, nigga, either you going to do Young Jock business or you going to do Swag Team business. I said, fuck it. I am Swag Team. So, that's, so you might well say we severing ties. And I decided to stop fucking with him that very day. That was my decision. 
So when he when he implemented the whole idea of not fucking with me with the quote unquote shelfing, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't because I fired Rico. It was an overall consideration of what had to be done at that moment. That's what the fuck I did. Got you. What year was that? Do you know? Uh, it had to be like 08, 09, somewhere in a- This is it. Okay. So 08, 09, you finally severed ties with Block Entertainment. Bad boy, Puff let you go. And I was about to say something earlier. Um, and you kind of took the words out of my mouth. A lot of people give Puff a hard time. They do. You, I, I have never known Puff to hold an artist when they really ready to get off that label. Um, you know, now, obviously, I'm on the promotion side, promotion marketing. The A&R admin, I guess they deal with that. I'm sure it's an artist or two out there that maybe feel like he held them. But for everybody I've ever seen, when they start bucking up, Puff is like, yo, you know what? I don't even want to stress him. Go. Go. Go, go handle yeah. your business. Yeah. I've never seen him hold nobody. Puff now, did, that's not to say he has. Puff didn't he make hasn't. All, he didn't make it all for me, bro. It was never, uh, nigga, I'm going to tell you how, like, I always tell this story, nigga. I took, <laughs> I took my wife to Miami for her birthday, my ex-wife. I rented this big motherfucking, big, big 80-foot yacht. You know what I'm saying? We on that motherfucker drinking some rock. <laughs> <laughs> I hit Puff. I'm like, yo, I'm in Miami. I'm on the yacht. I'm about to come past y'all. Nigga said, pull up, nigga. Me and Cassie, we just laying around. We ain't doing nothing. We chilling. I said, I'm going to pull up. Nigga, I pulled up, docked to that nigga house, got off, went in there, fucked with the nigga, got on the jet skis, went and kicked it for about two hours. When it was time to leave, he's like, nigga, what y'all doing tonight? Bring your wife, let's go out. I like, bet. So me and Puff talking. We kicking it. i never forget this. I pulled back up. Puff like, get in a Jeep with me, nigga. He like, nigga, you need to get you some of these Jeeps right here. And, and, and nigga, get you a Jeep like this when you come to Miami, nigga, we can mob like this. I'm like, yeah, this shit, this a, is the move. So we ride to the club bumping Biggie. I'm like, nigga, this high. So I'm like, I ain't never really get the opportunity to just be with Puff. Like, like, n like nigga, me and you, he never, he never overshadowed me, but we never got a chance to just be together. It was here and there, moments in time. But like, how that moment was, I was like, he was like, shit feel right, nigga. We need to be like mom. And I'm like, yeah, nigga. So I never forget, we pull up to fucking live, nigga. When we get to live, nigga, nigga, young bird, well, hit maker. <laughs> I think yeah, it was like- AKA hit maker. Hit maker, I think it was like, hit boy or something. something it was something, it was another pr producer. I can't remember, these niggas had these whistles. <laughs> So they throw Puff a whistle. Puff like, you know, I was like, I don't even really know what that whistle shit mean. I'm cool. I don't do whistles. I just, and I never forget Hit Rock was there. Hit Rock was like, boy, it's finna be live. Never forget this shit. We go in the club, we kicking it, shit. I'm like, damn, this what's up. The nigga Puff is on the goddamn, he on the shit, the bar where everybody perform at in front of the DJ and shit. And he going crazy. This bitch lit. You remember, uh, 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 Scarface, when, when that, that, that white woman was coming down the escalator. Yep. And he was in that man's house and he saw that man's wife and was like this. I was watching Puff. The nigga Puff was looking up there. He saw this, this, this white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, Yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow. I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the fuck kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what the fuck? So when I look up there, this white woman's side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cassie, I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. I was like, well, you make sure you send me a picture before you do that shit. So within like two, three days, she sent me a picture. I'm like, she done shaved her motherfucking head. <laughs> I'm like, that shit look good. When that shit hit the internet, boom. She started a whole trend, man. A whole trend. And I watched it she happen. She started a whole trend. So I got so many moments and stories in time like this. Bro, I could go on for days. Okay, let's move past your music career. 
2014, you joined Love and Hip Hop. I did. Some would say that's a risky move. What made you decide to do it? Um, Because they came to me the first year. And it was this chick they wanted me to be involved. I was like, I'm not going on this show with this girl. I'm a married man. I'm not finna be out here talking about this bitch, my, my motherfucking mistress. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, nah, I'm in a... I'm cool on that. You know, I got the big 13,000 square foot crib, seven, seven car garage, nigga. I'm cool. I'm like, I'm not doing that. And I never forget going to meet with Mona. And I'm sitting here looking at Mona, not knowing who the fuck she is, but I, I had some knowledge of her because I had dealt with so many people. Um, Chris Lighty, rest in peace. No, you know, so I knew who Mona was through the music, but I didn't know her. And I remember talking to her and I was like, yeah, no, nah, I can't do this shit. And I remember Kirk and Rashida saying, boy, you better do this shit. This shit gonna change your life. I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that shit. I'm not fucking with it. So then I remember seeing the first season and I was like, oh, this is all they had to do? I was like, oh, they got this shit all wrong. Everybody trying to be hard. And they're like, they got, got them hit records out. No, nah, I'm like, you gotta be, be yourself. So the second season came around. Same shit, but no. These motherfuckers is bigger. I'm like, what the fuck? Because imagine if I would have went on there that first season, them niggas, nobody on that show could have fucked with me. Nobody had the shit I had. They got the Bentley, fucking Ferrari, the Benz. I got every car you can think of. Big, big black fucking crib. You know, icy. I, I had all that shit. It was just right at that time, all that shit was finna dissipate because guess what? I was finna get a divorce. So... By the time that third season came around, I wasn't even thinking about the show. Once I met Carly and that shit kind of played out the way it did, I was just like, man, this she gonna fucking around. She might ask me to be on the show. Then again, she might not. I was like, because our relationship's so good that she might not even wanna fuck it up on this show. So she might not even ask me. So she didn't never ask me. So I'm like, cool, I ain't gotta even worry about that shit. Then one day, I was on that Ciroc. <laughs> we had one of them long nights, my nigga. We remember how we got home. And the sex was so fucking crazy. It was one of them like she was in her she was having a peak performance, just as I was. And that next morning she was looking through me. She was like, baby. <laughs> I'm looking at her, and I know I had to put it on her, but she put it on me too. And I looked at that motherfucker, I said, What she say? Just do this show with me. And I was like, nah. Can't do that. Like, I'm not fucking with it. You got, you get your, you do what you do. I'm a, she's like, baby, it'll be good for you and me. It's like, nope. She don't talk me into that shit. Okay, hold up, hold up. Are you still married at this time? I was going through a divorce, though. It was just a. So you, you was actually going through the divorce? Yeah, I wasn't divorced yet. Okay. But I was, I mean, I'm separated, you know. My wife, okay. my ex wife, she had another house. I had a house, so we, you know. It was good. I was do whatever I wanted to do. Mm. So this is the way you got on Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. And see, like I said, you know, I wasn't never really transparent with my personal side of things throughout the whole time. I was just being a rap artist. Niggas never knew, really knew what was going on with Young Jock. It was just like, yo, Young Jock, the nigga, he come, he work, put on a good show, that nigga out. He in, You know what I'm saying? So... I never forget like hearing people like niggas was mad when I got on third season. I'm always see this nigga, this washed up ass nigga, do, 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 do. nigga, 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 it's going down, nigga, that shit old, nigga, do, do, do. you know, niggas talking all that shit. But I knew, see, let me tell you what I knew. This is why I knew I was gonna work when I got with Diddy. When I used to watch Making the Band, I used to look at all the shit that they would do. Not looking at it like it was a produced show. I'm looking at it like, y'all niggas tripping. I'm like, Man, I walk to get that fucking cheesecake in the heartbeat, nigga. This is an opportunity. There you nigga. go. Nigga, I was, it was so much shit. I was just like, these niggas tripping. But I didn't look at it like it was produced. You know what I'm saying? I looked at it like it was like all the way like that. So when I watched that shit, I said, if I ever, if I ever get in front of Diddy, I'm going to make that nigga remember me. You know what I'm saying? Heads forth, young jock, bad boy, it worked. So I used to, when I was watching them two seasons of Love Hip Hop, I was like, I figured it out. I said, I know it. I know what they missing. And I remember everybody being in my living room in my home. And they said, well, what they missing, Jock? Since you got them, know what they missing. I said, they missing the funny nigga. I said, it's too many people that's trying to be the top, the, the creme de la creme, the top tier nigga, but 
nobody's just being the nigga who being they self and making people laugh. I said, we want to be entertained. I said, it's only so much fighting and arguing and bickering you can do. So when Carly started coming at me the way she was coming at me in front of them cameras, I just had to give it to her as the realest way I possibly could. And that was just jock being jock. And then and shit connected. People was like, this nigga funny. Because niggas didn't know. It was like a whole new person. Like, who the fuck is this nigga? Because I ain't never known this nigga be this funny. But if you knew me, you've been around me, you be in shit with me, you know I'm a silly ass nigga. I'm going to have fun. You know what I mean? Yo, so you and Carly had some moments on that show. Yeah. Um, she done released some nudes of you. Uh, you know, video circulating with you wearing a dress. Like, yeah. how much of that is y'all two saying, look, I, I, I'm, I, we gonna do something to make people talk about us, or or real? Well, we, honestly, with me and Carly, bro, it was it was almost like, our shit was just organic, bro. Like, it wasn't no, you know, the moments we had in front of that camera. I, I'll give you a perfect example. The very first fucking day I'm filming with Carly, I'm gonna show you how organic it was. I come on this set, I was like, man, I'm finna be on Love and Hip Hop. I'm like, God, please don't let this shit hurt me no more. No worse than what, you know, I'm like, nigga, I need to hit record, not this shit, you know, in my mind. I'm just like, uh. And I get on set, and here's this Love and Hip Hop with they lights and all, they crew, right? But she's filming a movie. So then it's a whole bigger crew and a bigger set, and I'm just like, this bitch got a set within a set. I'm like, that shit, what's up? So that shit had me a little nervous. So as soon as we start, she's like, baby, I just want the cheating to stop. And I'm looking at her like, the fuck is you talking about? She's like, I know you've been cheating. I'm like, bitch, you ain't never caught me cheating. I'm like, what you talking about? She's like, you want me to know how I know you cheating? I'm like, yes. She's like, because you wore those, you be wearing them same clothes three days in a row. What? Like, the fuck she, I'm looking around like, what? but I couldn't look around because I know the cameras on me. I'm like, and people in the back like, so I was like, oh, this bitch trying to, oh, this bitch got me on this show and finna try to do, drag me. <laughs> I said, she must forgot. I don't give a fuck. I said, oh, this, okay. All right. So I just said some dumb ass shit. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm a hood nigga. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with nigga taking a bird bath. And I, so once I saw the meme on a bird bath, hit. I knew that I was on to something because people didn't know me for being no outspoken nigga, no silly nigga. So I was like, I got a little habit. Every, every, and see, with me on TV, my facial expressions tell it all. You know what I'm saying? So I always looked at myself as the infiltrator. I was always the nigga who, I was really you at home watching the show. But, mm -hmm. When I get in front of that camera, I'm you. So if you on the sofa watching this show and somebody say some shit, you like, what? Hell no. Nah. Even in person, when I saw them kind of moments, I was the person sitting at home watching the show. So I was I never played it like I was on a show. I always played like, yo, these niggas let me be on set. And as this happened, I'm like, oh shit. And that shit worked for me. That's dope. That's dope. Okay, so we know you go through your divorce. No divorce is easy. Uh, you know. <laughs> that one kind of was. Losing, what'd you say? That one kind of was? Yeah. We, didn't even, have, mean, we didn't even have a bad marriage, bro. Interestingly put, we didn't have a bad marriage. We didn't even argue a lot. It just got to the point we grew apart. You know what I'm saying? We, we didn't have a bad marriage. We didn't have a, a bad split. You know what I'm saying? And we still good to this day. So it's just, it's just kind of, it's one of the things. Like, I've been fortunate, prayers to like, I be skating over certain shit, unlike most people. People be, be having some rough patches, and, and I be having them too. But the way my mind set up, and the way my relationship with God set up, I just feel like he's just grabbing me by the hand, like, come on, I got you. You got to go through this shit, though. But I'm, I'm going to make it a little bit easier for you. Here you go. All right, I'll see you next time. You know? Got you. Okay, so let me ask you this. Switch subjects for a second. Yeah. Was was this real or was it staged? I know you don't take yourself too seriously. You're a funny dude. You were driving an Uber. I, I went driving, around. The, I wasn't driving an Uber. No. Okay, what was you driving? Uh. So a cat came to me, 
and said, hey, I got this app. It's called Pull Up and Go. I said, word, how it work? He said, it's subscription based. I said, okay. He said, look, if you be a part of, you do the marketing, I'll give you 30%. So I sat down and crunched the numbers. I sent it to my attorneys. I was like, nigga, if you don't do this today, you're stupid. I was like, okay. I was like, well, how are we going to get this shit out here? I was like, well, that's why we want to give you 30% because you're going to handle the marketing. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, well, is there a discretionary fund for me to go and hire people for marketing? They're like, <laughs> no, nah, we'll pay you. They're like, so the money you pay me, I'm going to have to split it up with other people. I'm like, fuck that. I'll take a hit. So I was like, shit. They was like, so what you gonna do? How we gonna kick it off? I said, shit, I'm gonna look like I'm driving a fucking Uber. I said, so the dude that was actually in the car talking, he works for Pull Up and Go. The guy who was talking shit, mm. him and the girl, the girl works for the company too. So I said, y'all sit in the back seat, I'm gonna drive, act like I'm driving, you talk shit to me. They was like, are you sure you want to do this? Because this could have a really serious backlash. I mean, people are going to really think you're broke. I said, I don't give a fuck. I said, when they find out what this shit is, how it works, and it's going to be cheaper than goddamn Uber and Lyft, and people can make more money, I said, how oh, you think I care fucking less? I said, I'll take 30 million. I said, I'll take 30% of a billion dollar uh, 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 sub subscription-based app any day. And we did, and that shit said, Boom, that shit went through the roof. Investors out of the ass. The problem was COVID hit, came and shut shit down. I mean, it hit so hard with the pull up and go shit that you saw, I want to say, who was it? Uber or Lyft came back with Alicia Keys in the commercial or somebody. What that Alicia Keys in the commercial? It was somebody. They started basically trying to do some of the same stuff we was doing. And it was interesting because the minute... You heard the song for I Go Broke Like Jock when they start saying that shit. It was like, mm -hmm. that gotta be where it come from because nigga, I get money. I'm like, I'm on TV, radio, I still do fucking shows. What are y'all niggas talking about? But a young nigga seeing, like you here talking about, I gotta ask, like you should know me better than that. What the fuck would I be doing driving a goddamn Uber? And even if I did drive an Uber, I thought it was a prank personally. When I saw it, well, I'm like, yo. In, in a sense, that's what the fuck it was. To to make people be like, what? So I could brand the whole concept of pull up and go and to share what it was. So, you know, people, when the people who know me sit back and be like, that was some genius ass marketing. You was just willing to put yourself in the fire. And I mean, it has its ups and downs because now here it is. You get a record like <laughs> Lil Baby, yeah, yeah, we paid. And 42 Doug say, before I go broke like Jock. People went with that narrative because shit, just a few months earlier, nigga, we seen you look like you broke driving an Uber. So I was able to, I was able to walk my way right through that shit. Imagine this. Imagine, imagine having a plaque that's come from Lil Baby's label with your name on it. And that shit on your wall. You proud of it. No, you ain't on none of the albums, but through affiliations. And those assists, you're on radio, they gotta come through. We're gonna present you with a plaque. You know how the shit go. Yep. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at a little baby shit, and I keep catching it after the first verse. Today, I just happen to be sitting in the same room with that plaque on the wall. Oh, uh, this nigga, a little baby, hard. I love this nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, who is this little 42 Doug, little nigga? I'm like, he a little short. I said, them kind of niggas like that go, baby, them little niggas blow up, right? And I'm just sitting there, I ain't heard the song, looking at the shit, the shit load them, come on. Before I go broke like Jock, fuck with that dog like Vic. I was like, what the fuck he just say? <laughs> I said, I know goddamn where the nigga said, I, oh shit. Man, it seemed like my phone started ringing that week, man. Niggas, and I'm gonna say somebody pull up and go shit, it was funny. And I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna put him out though. He probably don't want me to put him out though. But my nigga OG Big L, OG Big L, I'm going to give you your roses today, nigga, in front of the fucking world. Let me tell you why I got to give you your roses, nigga. Because out of everybody who saw that shit and thought that I may have been broke for real, you one of the realest niggas. This nigga was so concerned. This nigga called me like, yo, I don't know what you going through, bro, but I love you and you a real nigga. Pull up on me today. I got a bag for you. Not a regular bag. I got a big bag for you. This will set you straight for the next two years because, nigga, you always been solid. And I see how niggas turn on you. And 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 it, I said, is this nigga finna start crying? I'm like, <laughs> and I wanted to tell him, L, it's 
it's cool, my boy. Cause I fuck with L. I would be like, nah, it's cool, bro. This shit is just da -da. But then I was like, nah, let me just keep that whole opportunity open for a nigga who told me he got a bag that'll set me straight for mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. So OG Big L, I'ma give you your flowers today, my boy, because that was the most solidest shit I had heard that whole year. Because a nigga was going through it. Just imagine, here I am. I'm sitting here. I got a nightclub. This shit popping. Nigga might make 150000 a night. Nigga got rolls. Right? I'm dripped in ice. I'm living my life. And a young nigga walking by. Fuck, I got a bro like job. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Is, do you not see this shit, nigga? Do you not see my shit packed out? Do you not see me on the radio? Do you not see me on TV? Do you not, like, nigga, what? But uh, th that shows you how fast. That shows you. The marketing was so big that the backlash of it, of me putting myself in that fire, niggas is walking around here saying I'm broke. I said, that's the best shit I ever seen in my life, nigga. That's, that is- Yeah, but it's genius marketing. It's genius marketing. The only thing is they focus more on you being behind the wheel than the actual company. Well, here's the thing. But the marketing is genius. But, but here's the thing. Had COVID not hit, okay? You remember, all that shit shut down. Uber, Lyft, that shit was done. Had yep. that not happened, had that shit not happened, to this day, I think Uber and Lyft uh, put the coronavirus out. I think they didn't want to pull up and go to take off. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> respectfully. I got a few more questions. Okay, let me go, not go, joke go about that because a lot of people really lost their lives through corona. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm insensitive in any in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So, but yeah, yeah. That shit had had had, had that shit not happened, no. They'd have been saying, no, this the shit young Jock driving for, man. I'm telling you, this shit big. Then they'd have found a backstory and been like, well, damn, we didn't fucking know this nigga owned 30% of the company. There you go. All right, before I let you up out of here, I got a few more questions before for you. Before right? I let go. This, um, and it's been one hell of an interview. You know, you're no stranger to these viral moments. One, You know, 2021, I think it was, there was a viral clip uh, from you on Love and Hip Hop, you and your son, your oldest son get into it, you threw a chair. Yeah. Do you regret that moment now? Fuck no, why? What you don't. I, who, how do you regret a moment where you are doing everything in your fucking power to save your child's life. I don't give a fuck what kind of backlash came from that. I could care less, nigga. This, this is me out here really fighting. Like, I'm fighting the universe. I'm fighting him if I got to, goddammit. it. I'm not about to lose you to these fucking streets because you want to act like, nigga, you ain't got no upbringing, no decent home training, or like you ain't had your father in your life. Now, if, if I wasn't in your life and I just came in like, man, you gonna do the right thing, then I can understand that. But nigga, I've been there with you the whole way from when you came out, goddamn five pound, eight ounce, and your little fucking head was in my head, them little arms right there, them little feet right there. I was like, this motherfucker little. You not finna tell me that you finna just go throw your life away because you want to run with some niggas who done put me in a fucked up situation, caused me to lose a multi-million dollar situation. Nah, nigga, we got to get something straight because if you can't see this now at 20 years old, some, the basic fundamentals of some shit, well, here it is, nigga. Nigga, this nigga you trying to run behind just cost me a multi-million dollar business? If you can't see that, if you don't understand that, well, you may never open your eyes. You, you, may, you may never realize in time. And I say that with everything in me because a lot of people don't get the opportunity to wake up in time before they realize the truth about life. You know what I'm saying? So I say, mm -hmm. you gonna got them hit me today and I'm gonna make sure of that shit. So hell no, nah, I don't regret it. And if it got to happen again, motherfucker, it'll go down again. So how's you and your little man right now? We great. We great. We, we That's awesome. Right. We also. Okay, speaking speaking of kids, you recently got charged with um child abandonment. I did. What's that about? Uh, real simple, man. Basically, <laughs> imagine having to okay, imagine, not even imagine, here it is. I was paying a certain amount of money a month to my my, my kids' mom. And now hold just just for clarity. Is this your ex-wife? Because no, no, I know no, you no, got no, multiple no, no, kids. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care to. I don't care to put the focus on who, which one it was. Okay. Okay. Fair uh, enough. We're not gonna do that because I don't need extra drama from this shit. You know what I mean? Yep. What's done is done. Uh, 
So I'm paying my, my I'm, I'm paying my kid's mom a certain amount of money. We haven't been before the courts, so I'm just paying her this money, but paying it, paying it, paying it, paying it. So make sure she up, she good, ain't no issues, no nothing. And we just kept having these run-ins, and I'm like, well, what the fuck is the problem? I'm giving you all this goddamn money, but you keep causing me grief. I say, you know what? Fuck this shit. Let's get the attorneys involved. You 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 want to play this game? Let's get the attorneys involved. We go into the courts, and that's what the fuck we did. So when I go to the courts, when we go to the courts, her attorney, my attorney, meet head on, and it turns into a situation, hey, we need your financials. We need to know everything you own. We need to know if you got goddamn, if you own any cryptocurrency. We want to know if you own vacation properties. We want to know if you have any real estate. We want to know if you have any other mortgages. We want to know about every kid. It's a, it's a long list of things so we can determine what I got to pay for child support, right? Mm -hmm. So in this process of, in the process of, there's a restraining order, a TPO that I took out. Let me explain something to you. I'm a black man. I'm a black man. They ain't just giving no black man no TPOs, my nigga. It's not happening. Like it got you got to really, they got to really feel like yo, you, you know, you, you you might be in danger a little bit. This motherfucker crazy. So I had to take out a TPO, and I don't want to paint the narrative that she's crazy or was crazy. I just want to, I want the narrative to be the situation was crazy. It is crazy, okay? So with a TPO involved, that means there's no personal contact, right? Now, while I've been paying you all this money, now it's to the point we got to go before the courts to figure out what I'm going to have to pay per month, right? So while the attorney going through all this paperwork, my attorney going through this paperwork, I can't see you, can't talk to you, and in my mind, shit, it's two months. Oh, shit, what I'm going to pay you? I don't even know what the fuck I'm supposed to pay you because now I'm paying a goddamn attorney to do the paperwork. We got a TPO. So I'm like, shit, we're going to figure this shit out in court. So come Christmas, here's a funny thing. I said in the interview, I said I offered a $1,500, right? And I did. People are like, $1,500, bro, you got all the goddamn money you can offer, but $1,500 for Christmas? It wasn't that. It was, hey, I'd rather you have something than nothing. Okay? Now, $1,500, if I got other court orders between other kids that I have and I'm only paying them that or maybe a little more, I'm not going to be keep paying you three, four times that. So in the process of them not accepting the 1500 that fucking attorney found some kind of loophole to go before that same court and pull out a warrant for me. How that happened? I can't explain that because I got a TPO against this person and we're in court. We're actively in court to try to figure out what the arrangement is. So how a judge granted that fucking warrant, I do not know. It does not make sense because it's like, well, wait, you got time to get your shit together. So when you come before us, this is what it's going to be. So how the fuck you going to say I abandoned my child? I got a TPO out against this person because shit is getting really fucking crazy around here. So here I am on the news looking crazy when I got all this political shit I'm doing. I'm a morning radio host at this moment in my life too. I'm on television. I'm a Grammy nominated artist of all these things, but I'm a philanthropist. I love life. If anybody know me will tell you I'm not a bad person. So when this shit happens, here is I get locked up on some shit and you're slandering my character. You're slandering my brand through this shit. Because, you know, people instantly, uh, you ain't paying your goddamn child support. No, 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 no. Uh, it was it came out and said child endangerment. So people start thinking, what was you doing around your kids? And, you know, when you start talking kids, people don't let up off your neck. That's like, oh, you ain't shit. You, you, you ain't shit ass nigga. I went through this same shit before years ago with one of my kids' moms. You know what I'm saying? And the news, they they had to up, they had to apologize to me publicly. The attorneys involved, these contingency attorneys, come in and well, whatever we get, what we get out of him, we are gonna get a percentage of it. Well, I don't know what my mother, and my child told them, folks. But they went on the news talking about he's in arrears, tens of thousands of dollars, and could be jailed if he doesn't make this payment. I'm like, what? She has a thousand dollars well. It was a simple situation then. She got upset. I was going to Japan and she wanted me to pay her early. She wanted me to pay her. Uh, I, I want an extra payment because I don't know when you getting back. I do all this shit via phone. I pay through the portal. I pay that shit. That shit pay you. It come on the card. I, what are you talking about? So when I told her I'm not going to do that, I won't pay you when the month comes around. I'm not paying you extra this month. You know what I'm saying? 
She got upset. She cussed me out. My ex-wife, wife at the time, was sitting there. So she get involved. I'm like, here, you talk to her. She get on the phone with her, and she said, well, we'll pay it. Send her $1,500 instead of $2,000. So I guess you could say she didn't get her full payment, and she went to the news with that. And that's that's a hundred percent true. And I'm not trying to slander her character. That's old news. But the truth is the truth. You know, when my when my character is slandered somewhere that you know, I'm supposed to feel like, well, fuck it, you did it to me. I can tell the truth about you too. I just I've I've been a, I try to be the bigger person in a lot of these situations. As you can see, these stories I'm telling you. You know, people would always say, oh, it's another side to the story. But I'm telling you that shit straight up. Because if I do some fuck shit, I can tell you I, I'm a, I did some fuck shit. And in that case, I didn't. And in this case, I didn't either. So, you know, you just have to watch how that shit come out because when that shit hit the news, it's almost like that really happened to the people. Yep. Cause yeah, I mean, once it get out there, for, for, for the average person who don't care to look no deeper, they take anything they see online, on social media, that is the truth. That That's what it is. It's law. And they run with it. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be out if it weren't real, man. Get the fuck out of here. And that's why that's why I take the news with a grain of salt because I myself have been a victim. I've been a victim of this shit. You know what I'm saying? And I don't I don't ever want to normalize that. You know what I'm saying? Sensationalism. You know when they oh, they they create this story and make it bigger than what it is and and draw you in and ooh and I don't I don't want to normalize that shit because I've been through it. So when I see shit on the news sometimes. People are like, bro, you don't want to bleed nothing. I, you're right. I don't want to bleed this shit because I know somewhere that it'd be some fuck shit along the way. And I've groomed That's myself right. to look at things through a certain filter. No matter who mouth it come from, no matter what desk it slides across with a stamp on it, I don't give a shit. I'm going to analyze it before I just go with it. Okay. So so speaking of news, Nick Cannon, yeah. like yourself, yeah. like yourself, y'all like populating the earth. Y'all, y'all, y'all got a few kids to your name. Yeah. Uh, you taking care of all your kids, and, and, and as a black man, I know that you're in your kids' life and you're taking care of them. Yeah. So that's great. But y'all, y'all believe in um, being fruitful and multiplying. Let's put it that way. Okay. But Nick said that he recently started, and I and I hope I get this right. He recently started considering getting a vasectomy. Young Jock, have you ever considered that? I did, but what what for? for really? What? Yeah. I mean, it was it was it was on one of the seasons of the show. Well, what for what? You just gotta be more responsible. I'm married now, so shit. My wife. Would Would you ever consider the um male birth control pill? Nah, I'm not, nah. Fuck. You no. wouldn't consider that? Hell nah, nigga. I ain't even get hell nah. I ain't even get vaccinated, so I'm definitely not finna put some new trial shit in me. Got me fucked up. Hell nah. Okay. Um, as you know, in the news right now, Roe versus Wade, it's all over the news. It's crazy. What, what what's your th- in, in this has been something that in my lifetime and your lifetime it seems like it is it is always going to be sitting on somebody's desk at that Supreme Court that they got to make a decision. Now they're talking about overturning it. What's your, what's your thoughts on them overturning? I think a I think that'll right be to have I, an think, abortion? I think I think that these politicians and lawmakers are playing with fire literally. Uh I think Women are, are are precious. I think that they are one hell of a species. Cause they're different than us. They do some shit we can't do. Like yeah, yep. they, we can. We, like they need our seed, right? But like, once you once you conceive and impregnate them, they can fully incubate a human life, a multiple human lives. Right. And in nine months, when that human life is born, they can detach that human life from an umbilical cord and feed it. And feed it. Correct. I don't think man has the concept to even understand what that is or how powerful and sacred that is. So to see these lawmakers and these politicians trying to overthrow, overturn Roe versus Wade, I just think it is it is the most insane shit in the world. I mean, you got lawmakers talking about, oh, well, if she gets uh, raped and they end up having to, you know, get pregnant, then look at it as the perfect opportunity to be a parent. Nigga, what? I'm hearing shit like this. Like, you can't, you can't tell no woman that. A woman, I think, 
they should have freedom to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Because right now to this day, if a man could go goddamn take some hair follicles from the back of his fucking head and put it on the front of his shit to make himself look young again, look like he got <laughs> hair, then a woman should be able to do what the fuck she want to do with herself. If a man can go and decide he want to have a vasectomy, then a woman should be able to decide that she wants to have an abortion. You know what I'm saying? And I just I just think it is what it is. Right now, if a man wants to go and correct his vision, he can go and get LASIK surgery or wear glasses. If a woman chooses to give birth or deny that and terminate, she should have the right also. What's next for you, Jock? I mean, we went through a whole hell of a lot. We did. Um, you know, what's, what's next for Jock? What's next for Jock? Vlad, I, tell Vlad to give me one of them goddamn Boosie situations. I keep seeing Boosie crazy ass on Vlad and Boosie my nigga. And guess what? He another one. He, he, Boosie is another one that people did not know that nigga was that funny, didn't know that nigga was that opinionated, didn't know that nigga had that much life in him. You know, as an artist, we, we love him. But then, as a personality, we love him even more. I need one of them situations, so that's next. Holla at your boy. Uh, so I'm working on this new series. Well, Love and Hip Hop is about to drop the new season. That's going to be crazy, 10B. Shouts out to my wife. Shouts out to everybody on that right there. Um, syndication, more syndication with my morning show. Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. You can catch us every morning, 6 to 10. You know what I'm saying? People love the second date update. My dog, shout out to Miss Shanika on there with me, man. We do big things every morning. That is growing. Uh, shouts out to all the new stations that we picked up in the last two weeks through syndication. I appreciate it. Uh, also, I'm working on a, a series called I Got a Story to Tell. It is definitely a dope, it's a dope series. Uh, I have the second episode, which is called The Gas Station Pill. Shouts out to my girl, Delicious. Kevin Savage, Smoot Films, and my dog, uh, Doug Parson, for hooking me up with Smoot, man. Shouts out to Chino Dollar for co-producing that with myself and uh, and Deshaun and Smoot, man. So, you know, I'm working on things because I I, uh, I, I did a unveiling of a, of, of a gifting from Ciroc New Year's and... Uh, one of the things I did while unveiling and making this drink, you know, the whole shit they send it to your house, people with the gloves and the suit, and you get to make the drink on camera, uh, or just talk about it. And uh, I gave my New Year's resolution, and that was one of my resolutions, that I was gonna get on the big screen. And I'm working towards that. So I think just as radio has been phenomenal for me in my career, and uh, reality TV through love and hip hop and the other many um, platforms I've been able to be a part of, I think that this this series is gonna be another springboard for me to catapult Young Jock because I think people now are gonna be like, yo, this nigga can act. So that's coming October, so be looking for that, man. Um, and it is what it is. Well, you got a lot going on and, um, you know, Jock, I, I got to tell you, I'm very proud of you, man. Seeing your your career trajectory, um, watching you reinvent yourself over the years, and just showing that, um, you know, it's okay to take a step outside of what people know. People know you, obviously, you're a rapper, but you've shown them, nah, I'm so much more than that. And you've been successful with it across the board. So congratulations on all your success. And I wish you the best in the future. Um, and we definitely got to do this again. No, definitely. I appreciate that. Good seeing you, Press. And I really mean Same that. To you. Likewise, that's, that's, brother. That's, there's a lot of that's a lot of real in that. Uh, it was good seeing you, brother. I remember the first time I was listening. And I heard your voice come across. And I was saying, what the fuck is Sean Press doing on here with Vlad TV? I said... And he's good. It's good. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. My brother. All right. One love, kid. All right, my boy. Stay, stay up. I'll, I'll catch you around.